Lord. He's like, we about to be, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> I think we're live. We're live. We are live. live. Are we? Live. Hold up. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. One second, one second. I'm still doing refresh overload. We here. We here. All right. All right, cool, 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 cool. Let's get it. Welcome to OPU Podcast episode 20, a very special episode that we have been talking about doing some some of this for a while. <laughs> kind of spurred them on for sure, but it'll be fun once we get some more people in here. We are going to do a call-in show, but before we even get into that, boys, how we doing? Doing good. I'm doing great. I'm loving this layout, man. Doing I'm amazing. It. We look crisp, Actually. bro. I'm looking at the stream. We look crisp. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We look Should have been in the middle, but it's all good. Like, yeah. man, what? Yeah. Maybe Always next time. about bro. that stuff. After the Giants get ready to get, get down with you, you might not be in no in no lineup, big dog. <laughs> ain't no, listen, man. Ain't nobody cooking no uh, no pigs, no no boars, none of that. Ain't no pork for dinner. Pork for dinner. Yes, sir. Chat, what's good with y'all? Sway Shocks, Doran Ross. Slevin's already here. With I'm, I'm already knowing what to expect from him coming pretty soon, I'm sure. Um, what's good with y'all, Chad? You talking about the Giants? We are the Giants already put your uh your daggone worm in third. <laughs> like you but shouldn't even be saying, the one to say bro, I ain't endorsing big dog. You feel me? I'm I'm not running around here. Jupiter top one. He the, he's the top man. That's not me, bro. I don't care about cuz. I, I don't. I don't. If I was a worm, I wouldn't be acting like I was a big dog neither. If you a bottom feeder, that's how you gotta live. I respect it. Gotcha. All right, Pork. You know how we do. We'll we'll mess with twelve. We'll mess with twelve around here anyway, man. But it's all good. I fully accepted the fact that my Gorise is a terrible, terrible being. Like I've already accepted it. It's done. I, mean, I think we can say that for all of them. Yeah, like bad people that is. No, not bad even bad people. people. Just like with the bad top did nothing wrong. Okay, give them give them two chapters. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna get an insect line soon. No Th- this is literally just say, it was the bird that was calling people insects last time. It wasn't Top Man. <laughs> top Man was just doing his job. <laughs> gotcha, this is goddamn gotcha. Greenville with. Uh, you see what I'm saying? If I was saying this stuff, then the chat would be paint the town red. Crow is a celestial oh, dragon fanboy, and uh, this this man been pushing the Top Man agenda. For how long now? <laughs> Before we go. <laughs> That's crazy. Once, that once, is actually once, nuts. Once we heard the name, it was over. Like, yo, <laughs> I didn't care about nothing else. And I'm actually disappointed in all of y'all because how we got our own people in the stock market and y'all don't buy no stocks into yourselves. Like, y'all look in the mirror and see failure. What's going on? Yes, I don't care about that worm, bro. This, oh. this character you see, this is not Jupiter. This is Majin Crow. Okay. I don't care about Jupiter. One of the moons of Jupiter. If I had to pick a celestial dragon, it would be Garling, bro. What? And that's what I did. <laughs> that's your God. This character of mine existed <laughs> before even uh, the Saturn got a name. Saturn. So <laughs> I, I've been here for a while. I paid my dues. And yes, my lips are moving. I'm speaking coherently so that you can see my mouth. Uh, shout out to... Uh, oh. Uh, amazing art, <laughs> stuff done. Hey yo, yeah, Ooh. mega pause and all of that, but still. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Crow, you want to address what we doing today? Walter D. Rocket says the audio isn't working. Audio is working. Uh, God help. In fact, anybody else? Can anybody say else say we've been for like ten minutes? Oh, I know. We've been talking for a long time. Anyone else in the audience? Is the audio working? Oh, okay. Sway Shock says working. Okay, so the uh, rocket is tripping. Apparently, well, okay. Is it just preach though? Could it just be preach? that's not working. Can y'all hear preach? I think they could hear me. I just wasn't talking. Okay. Oh. Uh, interesting. It's okay. good. Perfect. Okay, we've gotten I'm reassured. All right, all right. Brother just came through and dropped the ball. Probably gonna send another message. That was crazy. <laughs> That's wild, bro. All right, chat. You're doing a college show today. Oh, what's up, JJ? Let's hear it. I just had to say real quick. Saw my guy Flevins, you know, top man representer. I saw just a second ago. He was like, Oh, I'm not a member. And then the next time he says something, my boy a member. Shout out to Flevins, man. <laughs> that was fast. That was fast. That was very fast. Will of Dreams, what's good? Planet birthday. Bet, 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 bet. Everybody said they can hear us. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah. We're doing a call-in episode. So, 
Here's how this is going to work. We are we have a Discord. As you can see, Vex has it linked, pinned at the top. So it's just going to be very hard to miss. We are going to bring some of you guys on for a short while. Don't miss what I just said. A short while. To, just to, to, to tell a hot take and elaborate a little bit. Then you get booted off. Okay, now nah, let me stop. But we're going to bring y'all on, let y'all talk with us a little bit. Give a hot take and let and interact with the chat just to make sure that we show some love to the fans and get y'all on here because we love y'all and this has been long overdue. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Vex for the five gifted, by the way. Of course, the legend himself. So Vex is carrying the mod work. Not only has he <laughs> put the sure. link up for the Discord 10 seconds into the stream being uploaded, but he's also gifted five so, uh, like five memberships almost every stream. Shout out to Vex. Big dog in chat. So, um, yeah, man. No, big dandy man in the chat. The man himself. If you are not in the OPU Discord, join the Discord. That is the first step if you want to get on the stream. Um, yeah. First step is to join up the Discord. Tell us who you are in case you have a different username. If you have the same mm -hmm. username, then it's very easy to tell. But And then after that, go into the general chat of the OPU Discord. It should be under Study Lounge. And you say like, yo, uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm auditioning to be on the uh, OPU uh, podcast. And then just grab me into the whole VC. And then we'll be there to pick you up. And you'll be on the stream. Give your hot take. Whatever it could be. It could literally be the most uh, stupid One Piece hot take possible. <laughs> and we will entertain it or something for a minute. And, and see, like... What you really talking about? I don't know, but yeah, and it don't gotta be. I tell you, if you just want to come through and say what's up, you know that works too, bro. You know? Hell, even my if you want to, gotta be my tight. favorite oh, chapter in Egghead. Like he on the casting couch or something. We talking about an audition. Calm down, please. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, all right, all right, pivoting from that. <laughs> but before we get into all that, how much does a couch cost? I want to have a word about a conversation that took place in the general chat this morning. Oh, that. that Discord is it has been holding me lately. It like I was in that conversation early, and then Discord just stops giving me notifications for everything. So I'm like, dang, they scared to respond. Three hours later, I get all of these notifications at one time. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. But anyway, um, where does it go to the root of this? Cause it's some BS. Um. Well, we could talk about the original posts first of all. I think that would be cool. The original which was, posts? Yeah, which was who was more important between um, Nami and Robin. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's tough. Man, that is very, very tough. If I had to really. choose... No, it, 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 no, it is. It is. Because it, it depends on what you're asking. If you want to... Hey, can you boys hear me? Yeah, yes. Hear you. Much better, right? Good, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yes, sir. Yep. I got it connected to the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> Zane's all right, my bad. All the good, good. <laughs> it's still coming through. My bad. Didn't mean to interrupt. Nah, you good. Nah, you good. I, yeah. I was gonna say, what were we talking about? Was that was Nami or Robin? Is that what I heard? Yes, Nami or Robin. I was Nami gonna say, if, if you want to choose uh, the journey as a whole. Like, oh my goodness, pause. <laughs> What's going on? No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Flemmas, bro. With this, oh, this my it. god, this is probably the best super chat we've got. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Joey. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's crazy. Hey, actually, bro, bro, can we talk about that for a few minutes? Like, what do y'all think about that? All right, I'm gonna say that, and I'm gonna oh, this. I'm gonna real quick. Let's 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 get grade seven minute drill off for it. What do we think about seven minute drill? It was like an eight. Okay. It was good. Eight out of ten. Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah. I, the only thing I didn't like was the, bro. The Pimba butterfly take was horrible. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's wild. Nah, I love the Pimba butterfly, but yeah. yeah. No, that take. It's not been a good kid, Mad City though. Just like, bro, like, because the thing is, like, J Cole, bro, some of his songs be putting me to sleep. So when he's Talking about like Hendrix's album, one of his best albums. Like, I don't get it, bro. But, but you gotta say, from Cole's perspective, he don't think his music put people to sleep. So he's not gonna be like, well, I can't say that because my music boring too. Nah. He's like, 
not, people not trying to like. I think he truly does believe that because there's a lot of people that don't like that album. Yeah, I mean, but he was spitting. I love it. Kendrick, Kendrick takes like, bro, he, he dropped one project in like six years and it was, it was all right. I have a I have a hot take. I feel like it's not even close to Good Kid, Mad City. Like, no, not, not even close. Yeah, I agree. In my yeah, opinion. Right. Vex is going to be our first call. All right, Vex, once we get through with this J. Cole conversation, <laughs> we, we go, you can hop right in. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> I think 7-Minute Drill is probably like a 7 out of 10, maybe. Um, yeah. It could have been more aggressive. It wasn't. I'm not mad with it because, like you say, he just testing the water. Like, yo, I mean, he didn't want to do it. You can tell. That's pretty clear. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But how I feel about the apology, um, I got mixed feelings because as a person, I get it. That's his man's. It's like, I'm not going to beef with you for no real reason. But as a rap fan, it's disappointing because I wanted these two. Like J. Cole been rapping about, I'm the best out I smoke a rapper if anybody step up to me for the past four years. So somebody stepped up to you. And now you apologize, and yeah, it's a special occasion because that's your partner. But it's just, I think it's I point. think there's some context we're missing. There it's, is behind behind the scenes. Like, you I think, think so? yeah, because that Joe. I don't know if y'all saw what Joe Budden said uh, recently. He was talking about how Drake and Kendrick have disses on the way, and it's like, on like the going, they're going hard on each other. Like it's not like some friendly and stuff. I would get that oh, because yeah. the idea of you gotta pick a side. That's like that's basically what yeah. I'm saying. Like so I, I could I can see Cole like, look, I don't wanna pick a side. If I wanna rap against Kendrick, I will do it for fun. But if it's on all this pick a side, y'all finna be seriously beefing type stuff, I don't wanna be involved in that. I can respect that. But it's still a little disappointing though. At the I, same I, time. And I think it's disappointing because like it's like, bro, I see on I see on Twitter, like once J. Cole dropped his, I see people Trending so many different things. I see rap is back on Twitter trending, and I feel yes. like it's like, bro, I, I haven't seen this much DJ Academics and Joe Budden on on Twitter on YouTube since like 2016, <laughs> bro. And, and it's like, I think people were so excited with this going on, and it's just like, I don't know, bro. I feel like rap has been like kind of down in a slump for a while. Yeah. So it responded in general. It was just fun for rap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Flevin said when you heard Conductor come, I ain't gonna lie. The first beat was kind of trash to me. It was sounding like some City Girl stuff. But when I heard that Conductor drop, I was like, oh, okay, this is... Oh, my goodness. This is hard. Oh, my goodness. Because <laughs> I've been running around the house. You guys, my girl, I've been just screaming, Conductor, for like a month straight now, randomly. It's just been in my head. So when I heard this, I was like, oh, my God. Okay, he talking now. But, yeah, it's, it's a little disappointing. I ain't gonna lie. I feel, uh, bro, I feel... Because if you think about it, like, he dropped a diss... I think he saw it as an opportunity for like a marketing for his own project, and I guess he just felt bad, bro. I, I truly believe he got um he got pressured into it, kinda. He literally said he did. He said his homeboys were like, "What you gonna say, Cole?" Yeah, everybody. What in you gonna phone. say? Yeah, even even in seven minute drill, he was like, "My phone ringing for a toxic reply." Hey. <laughs> He didn't want to do it, so he could say his heart wasn't into it. So I respect it. I get it. But, man, I would like for them to hop on a song together, though. Conductor is the um, producer of the beat for the second half. You probably heard the tag a little bit on some of Drake joints. He do a lot of stuff with Griselda. But, yeah, that's just the producer tag because it's for the beat switch. I don't know who made that first beat, but it was. You think Kendrick about to drop a project soon? It's like a hopefully it's better than Mr. Morale and the Snoop Fest. That was trash, bro. It was, bro. Yeah, it sucked, bro. The worst part was like it just took it was such a long wait. So it's like you're expecting something better than that. It, it was like not if you good, don't drop bro. a bud, do it like when you win a swing. Like if you've been dropping like every other year or whatever, then you come drop a dub. I wouldn't be mad at it. But you go six years almost without dropping and put out that? Come on, bro. Yeah. I was very disappointed. I was listening to that to that album in the car. I swear I was dozing off. And you know what's crazy? I actually didn't like To Pimp a Butterfly when it first came out. But I returned to it like two days later, and I loved it. But with this one, I tried like four times. I was like, this is just not a good album, bro. <laughs> it, was, it just the rapping was not as good as Kendrick usually is. I get the theme, the whole 
self improvement and therapy and just come to terms with who you are and stuff. But I hate when people act like just because the album had a good theme means it's automatically a good album. Like that's not the case, bro. The music still got to be good. Big facts. But Spreddy in regards Gibbs. to what we talking about, Spreddy Gibbs in the chat, bro. I'm waiting on that Drake diss, man. I'm ready to end that man's career. It's not happening. Bro. I feel like there's so <laughs> many conspirators in the rap industry going up against Drake. There, there's probably so many things up against Drake right That's now. That's going to work in his favor, though. Bro, everybody sure. is against Drake right now. Everybody. Like, everybody in the rap game. Drake is quite literally Thanos right now. Any, anytime somebody hops on a diss track and they dissing, like, five people at one time, it's always well-received. Drake got Future, Ross, Metro, um, Travis Scott and Kendrick, all he can drop it. I mean, go out there at one time, you gonna kill him. Wait, what? Why Travis Scott? I was the same. When when um, this was probably like two months before the future album came out. Travis Scott was um, he was at a I don't know if it was Astro World or whatever, but he was at a festival. He was at Coachella. Metro was there. Yeah, Coachella. And Travis Scott, he was like, play that, play that, play that. He kept trying to get them to play the disc live on. You know what I'm saying? Live on say what the, the um future one, the one that's dissing Drake. Like this really? was like two or three yeah. months. Yeah, he was like, play that. Future was like, nah, I ain't trying to do that right now. He kept trying to get him to play it. So he gonna probably <laughs> Drake gonna throw some of that for him for sure. Like, oh you been all on, on me, but you you won't know right. keep it a, Bro, what was your my dick? Okay. What was I more invested in? P. Diddy situation or this situation? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. First of all, we all I already knew P. Diddy, P. Diddy was on. I always knew he was a scumbag. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like we, this this is nothing new to me. There's always been a lot of stories, so yeah, I, I mean Bro, he literally had a woman. Y'all know who Cassidy is or that's her name, right? Cassie. What's her name? Yeah, Cassie. Cassie, yeah, yeah. Let's let's Bro, watch our words. It, Oh uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say trust me, trust me, trust me. Okay, I'll just put it out. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it PG. Don't worry. But nah, if you go and and look at her story and a bunch of st- bro, he blew up <laughs> Kid oh, Cudi's car oh, yeah. in his driveway. <laughs> Literally blew up his car in his driveway, bro. A whole yeah, lot of uh, yeah. Dolph Flamingo violet <laughs> energy going on over there. <laughs> For sure. Planet Birthday says he surprised J. Cole said Kendrick's album was damn with his prime. Numbers wise, that's his prime. If you look at it, it was like 400K first week. He got the um, the Pulitzer Prize for that album. I love that album too. No, that album is gas, bro. I don't care what nobody says. Good. I love that one. But yeah, that, and that I have memories with it. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of memories with that. For man, sure. I think I think J. Cole deserves all the flowers, man. I've been saying mm-hmm. I think he's the best rapper. I've been saying that for a few years now. And mm-hmm. um I mean, you know, it's good to know that he got that in his back pocket if he need to. But like if you really respect somebody, I don't really feel like, you know, you want to come at them any any type of way, you know. Uh I was saying I feel like it's big. You know, we we all human. We gonna have our flaws, and sometimes we get moved to we get urged to move in a way that we don't comfortably feel. But like when you could look yourself in the mirror and say that in front of thousands of people, knowing that they gonna record it and say it to show it in front of millions of people, I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, this is a, this is a moment of hip hop altogether. This is showing masculinity on a level of which we're not accustomed to seeing it. We used to seeing the toxic. You say my name now, I gotta come at you. That things start escalating. My boy was like. I felt the type of way I responded, but now that I'm sitting with it, I'm not happy with it. And like, I'm so mm-hmm. appreciative that he was man enough to look himself in the mirror and not just say it to, you know, his confidants or just call Kendrick and let him know what's what. He let the whole world know, like, yo, I'm not really about this. Like, y'all know 95% of rappers be lying. So when somebody <laughs> be like, yo, I got smoke for whoever wants smoke for me, just kind of put it in the same boat. And I'm just proud of that man for, you know, looking internalizing and realizing that ain't how he want to move. And he he addressed it the same way that he addressed mm-hmm. the beef publicly. Publicly, yeah. And another thing that's kind of irking me, a lot of people like his career is done. Bro, it's been rappers that rap about getting money and being very violent, right? I'm not going to use the word, but y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah. That have been beat up on camera and their careers were just fine. I promise you, J. Cole would be all right. I bet the follow might be his biggest first week sales Rapp- of anything. Rappers is snitching, coming out of jail and dropping bangers. <laughs> Literally, bro. 
So what? Let's let's stop that. Like, gonna got out of jail, and he even though it, apparently it's a lot of stuff with that. That was still his most successful first week. With it. I think I think he got out. So we gotta relax. Yeah, J Cole is not. He's not your rapper, bro. He's not. You know. Yeah, it's not on brand for him, and, and he's never been the type of guy to be going so aggressive like as somebody like that. And I think like, the real reason why it's because it's he's it's because he's catching so much flack from someone who he considered was a close friend. <clears throat> and you know another thing, the reason I think he kind of regretted it, if he would have just got on there just rapping like talking his and bigging himself up, I think he would have been fine. But him talking about his albums and calling them boring and trash, I think that's probably what didn't sit right with him. If he would have just been like. I'm not stunned what you're talking about. I'm the best stop, and we can we can hop in the ring and see that. Cool, but I, he probably genuinely didn't mean that stuff about those albums, but just had to say it to kind of give people a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, so is is Drake going to respond? Or no. I think Drake dropping tonight. I think Drake dropping tonight. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all did y'all see the the Metro Future track list for the their next the next yeah, project? Nah, yeah. Still don't trust you. <laughs> I bet you it's gonna bang too, bro. This might be more R and B though. I think I'm fine with that. I like I like R and B future. Mm-hmm. Hey yo, uh, Zane, I need you to rate that that future Metro one through ten. I need your rating. Oh my god, man, that's a nine, bro. That's a solid nine, in my opinion, bro. I bang like every song on it. Besides, there's like one or two I don't bang on it, bro. But like I can go through that whole album front to back. Besides the two I said. I haven't listened to the album in its entirety yet. Like the the two I the two I don't listen to are Where My Twin At and Everyday Hustle. I like and that. They're, that's they're not, I like, though. I like that. It's not even bad though. It's not even bad. <laughs> it's not even bad. I knew you liked that. I'm a a sucker. Like, if y'all switch up the beat in the middle of the song, I'm automatically there. I don't know what it is about me. Like, yeah, once Raw stop, and then like once that beat switch, like Future was like, let me spit for real. Like, let me just not repeat the same words. I'm actually spit with this, and I'm like, yo, that's my favorite. (laughs) See, see, when I listen to Future, when I'm listening to Future, I like to like, I like the vibes, bro. Like, that's what I listen to Future for. My favorite song on it is "Ain't No Love." I think that's a banger, bro. I need to run it from top to bottom, um, probably tomorrow. But I still haven't had. Well, I've had the time. I just didn't care to. Yeah. Um, I thought the album from last year was better, though. Which, which one? one? You talking about the one with, with the? Uh, I never, I liked, never you. liked you. Nah, this one's whatever definitely had, better. Like, than I never liked you. Puppies and zooties or whatever like that. Yeah. yeah. I never liked you. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there was more throwaways. On that one, you know, it was wild. Drake was on that album too. Yeah, exactly. care for you, and then it was another one too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was on that wait for you one. The iron is resuming toxicity in the midst of basic competition. I mean, you can assume that, but I'm looking at the. This is my thing, Max Foley, and that's a good point. What you're saying is a good point. Like you're definitely entitled to that opinion, but I'm just saying, looking at the this as a whole. Between Drake and Kendrick, because that's what it really is. I don't think that's gonna just be basic competition. I'm not saying that somebody's gonna get hurt behind it, but those two guys genuinely don't like each other. And this whole pick a side thing is kind of drawing a wedge in between the rap game. So I can understand why he wouldn't want to be a part of that because naturally it's gonna be a part of that. But at the same time, I, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, it could have just been like competition too, but, but don't you think like, right now things ain't like <laughs> you feel me. Don't you feel like you get like a, a little bit more respect for each other when you do it? Because like you see Jay Z and Nas, they're still cool like years later, even though they hit each other for a certain time. I don't know if they really cool or they just do that for the cameras, man. Great right? business. It was some things said that I don't think you can come back from in that regard. Great business. And that's another thing, like nobody got hurt, for, well, at least of those two. Nobody got hurt from it, but that was a lot, that went pretty far. You feel me? So yeah, like yeah, yeah. everybody keeps saying that nobody's gonna get hurt, so they can just wrap it up. It's never gonna just be just rap. <laughs> like that's just how the culture is, bro. Like only people who did that was fucking Jonah Lucas and who that was some other dude. And nobody cared about that shit. So, but yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, bro. bro why? Why do I see Lupe? Lupe why do I see Lupe Fiasco all over my timeline today, talking about how he's better than Kendrick? I ain't gonna lie, bro. No, don't do it. Bro. He don't make better no, music don't, than don't Kendrick, do bro. He, 
<laughs> he's a better <laughs> lyricist than Kendrick. I'll give him that. He raps better than Kendrick. He doesn't make better music. He don't make better music. He don't make better music. But y'all for that, like he got no fire. This is Wale take. No, no, bro. Lupe is way different. Wale, come on, bro. I'm saying it's, oh, like, it's a similar take though, like, bro. Nah, I'm just he raps better than Kendrick Lamar. He got some great albums, The Cool and Food and Liquor. Those are great albums. This is a great One Piece stream, by the way. Yeah, bro. I was gonna, <laughs> I really was gonna say, bro, the One it's Piece seventh fall. <laughs> I didn't expect that. That was hilarious. Listen, bro, it's bro. a break weekend. You know, it's yeah, the most entertaining stuff going, going on right now. So. Yeah, it'd be all right. Yeah, man, but, uh, speaking of which, we have 35 of y'all in the stream now. So we'll just reiterate we're doing a call in show, even though we've had zero so far. <laughs> but oh, yeah, uh, up, join bro. up on uh, the OPU Discord. Links at the top of the chat. Uh, so you can join up there and then come through. And yeah, just uh, go into general, say whatever you want to say. Or if like you have something very specific you want to say, just let us know. And then. I know we'll you got some funny takes, man. Yeah. Yeah. For could sure. literally be anything about One Piece. How for, now, for some reason, it could even be about Kendrick and J. Cole. Be about whatever, whatever you bro. <laughs> Since like it's great like week, we'll embrace the that, that, that uh, randomness of it all. Lupe, Lupe apologized to Kendrick, but he also pre- he explained he wasn't apologizing to Kendrick. He was just apologizing for, for like the whole ride that came with it. He, he on Twitter literally yesterday, he was like, don't put me in that. I did not apologize to Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> he was bad about that. But no, I think Lupe is Lupe is crazy, bro. I got. But yeah, Vex. When I saying who's winning, Mavs or Clippers? Mavs, of course. The Mavs hell. Mavs in five. It's gonna be a good one. Mavs, of course. Mavs going to the finals this year. No, I don't know about that. Well, Maybe the Lakers. Here, bro. I, honestly, bro, if speaking, Mavs go to the finals. Luka is the best player. In the league, he already oh, is now. the best player. Yeah, he's right, the bro, best no, player no, in the league. He, he might be, bro. He he might be. How are you consider every now? How you know, he for doing best player in the league? I am genuinely serious. Like Zayn is one hundred percent. In my opinion, he's one hundred percent right. Luca be, is the best player. How can you be considered MVP? <laughs> be the best player in the league. Will Dream's coming is hilarious, bro. He said. No call is and don't talk about one piece and then we just go straight to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we you got our first caller. First call yeah, online good. now. He is a legend, somebody who we're very, very familiar with. Big Vex. What's good, gang? It's, it's your boy. boy. It's your boy. It's Vex, the Silicon legend. Uh, yeah, I'm sure y'all have seen me around uh, hanging out with TLA, hanging out with OPU, doing my own thing. I came to spit hot takes. I heard that's what you guys were looking for. So I had like two for you if you wanted to cook on them. Um, first one, though, is something that I'm a huge proponent of in the community. And for some reason, I get a lot of flack. I am here to tell you all that first, like these stream and second, join the OPU Discord so you can spit with these kings as well. But uh, yes, not hot takes. Uh, <laughs> Please do that. No, 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 no hot takes at all. Uh, check out the OPU shop as well. You know, they yes. got some, like, I'm about to I'm about to pick some of that up on my next paycheck. But uh, link in description. Members... We haven't paid this man a penny. All right, nah, I paid Same y'all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. Say, he, no, he, is the, he is the money I'm man here. behind OPU. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm here to tell you guys, and this is this is what a lot of people have been saying that I'm 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 barking up the wrong tree or anything like that. But uh, Thriller Bark is the number one arc in One Piece. Ooh, me wrong. Bro, that, that is a- <laughs> kick him out, kick him out. Wait, wait, wait. Can we hear? Can we hear your reasoning? Yeah, can we hear your reasoning? Oh, that is crazy. I want to hear because. I can make up a reason myself, but it's for oh, something God. completely different. Of course. Okay, so I'm just going to list off some of the most peak moments that we got. As far as the comedy, it's top tier. Like, the interactions that we get between Chopper Thanks. and uh, and and Hogback are right there with some of Chopper's best moments. Uh, so Luffy pushing the zombie back into the ground was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, I fell off God. my couch laughing at that, bro. Zora versus Ryuma's skeleton or, or a zombie or whatever it was peak. Brook and Laboon's backstory was absolutely fantastic. It introduced the concept of Wano. It introduced Whole Cake Island and Big Mom as concepts as well. Thriller Bark set up for so much it's absolutely ridiculous i think the fight with oars is insane it's absolutely one of the coolest like you get to see all of the it's like in any's lobby it's cool to see them split up right 
and you get to see like one-on-ones with all the straw hats kind of shining and a little bit of duo power team up with between uh like uh frankie and chopper going up against fukuro and stuff like that no we get to see every single one of them flex we got to see one of the yes there were some low sanji moments in the start of the arc but the the (laughs) moment where he and zoro were beefing uh to to face off with kuma and like no I'm going to be the one who get who sacrifices myself for the future pirate king. Like there was so many goaded moments. It is one of the absolute most amazing arcs. Every single time I watch through it again or read through it again, it just keeps getting better. Thriller Bark is peak. I didn't even list off all of the best moments like Usopp and Perona. Like it's it's nothing but peak except for Absalom. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I gotta okay, ask you, okay. what do you think about Moria? Because I feel like that's the one I thing like, where a lot of people don't like Moria. They don't have to like Moria, but the thing is, is if you like Luffy, you're not supposed to like Moria because they're foils. You get to, you get set up with the fact that Moria, he was once Luffy coded, where he was just trying to go and beef with fools like Kaido in the New World, and he got surreptitiously smacked down, and his crew paid the ultimate price, and then he ended up now he's he's the darkest timeline Luffy. If you vibe with Luffy, you don't necessarily like Moria is not going to be your favorite character, but that doesn't mean he's not a good villain. That's the same thing I feel with Doflamingo. Doflamingo is a terrible human being. He's one of my favorite characters in the entire story, though, because he is such a good villain though and i think moria is really good i thought the shadows asgard stuff was really cool and then you look at the parallels in the post like time skip recontextualization of the sun coming up the dawn like and like all the things that we got in wano and things like that thriller bark just keeps getting better with age like a fine wine listen bro i'm with you bro like i i always defend thriller bark i don't I don't think I've ever heard somebody say it's the best arc in One Piece, but I, like, bro, it's it's probably my top ten, and you know, coming off the high of this lobby, no, well, bro, it's a lot of arcs in One Piece, right? So like, ten is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, like coming oh, off the really, high of tough. Enos Lobby and Water Seven, I think it just it, it was. I think it was a lot better than people give it credit for. Well, it got snubbed from Eni's Lobby and Saba Odi being sandwiched in between two really, really peak narrative arcs. But like you needed in between all of that seriousness a good bit of comic relief. And I don't think that the humor has ever been as consistent in any one particular arc. I agree with that. Yeah, and it's cohesive as it was in Zerler Bark. It was, it was good. It's a breath of fresh air. I'm not gonna he- lie. There's also a bit of. Uh like a component of where if Luffy doesn't get worldly attention, sometimes the arc feels like it's missing something. Like we see that with Skypea, we see that with Thriller Bark. Like in, even though they're in isolated situations, like that worldly attention that you, Luffy usually gets when he's doing something massive in a city or doing something crazy that no one expected, like challenging a warlord like in Alabasta, usually that shit's you know, covered and is known throughout the entire country it's it's interesting but in to the me, case of the bark and skypea is just hella like stagnant people people trash on wano's ending on hoki island ending certain endings and they say it's the most important thing in a story in a story arc right but like thriller bark had the best ending in one piece arc besides maybe like enos lobby or a few others but like bro nothing happened in kuma and everything that was going on that's one of oh, the best One Piece endings and so like good. perfectly I thought you were talking about something else because it perfectly lines up with what's going in the current day right now in terms of current day events. And that's the big ass shadowy figures and that how they no. barely missed the Straw Hats because of the fog. I That was the main reason I thought you were saying it's it's peak and like the best art. Like, because if, I, well, that's like... If that's got that devil, like like spine tingling like it gives you goosebumps like kind of like what when the world was that and i really do like that i'm glad you brought that up prince because i completely forgot honestly yeah but like i agree that it, thriller bark not only like so it had a little bit of a rough start and like i said like the the absalom mm-hmm. stuff's super creepy uh people could meme and say like but it gave us the nami showers you know <laughs> but like uh no like the the sanji <laughs> stuff is also like super creepy at the beginning but he has a really goaded moment at the end but like I just love that it did all of these things, all of these fantastic things that I'm going blue in the face listing off right now, and I can't I can't count on my fingers and toes. And it did all of that in less episodes than any other actual Grand Line arc. Like the, the East Blue, mm. yeah, there were some shorter arcs and things like that, but Thriller Bark was like, it was just kind of almost nothing but gas. You know what I mean? It was it uh, wasn't it was only like what like 60, uh, 60 episodes. Yeah. I'll give, I'll give so, my, my hot so, take, bro. It's like I I think this is a hot take. Maybe it's not. I think I like Thriller Bark more than Arlong Park, um, mm-hmm. more than Barati, more than any East Blue arc. And oh, so I agree. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I do like Thriller Bark, not gonna lie. 
I can't say that just because of the ending, though. I mean, I know y'all was just saying stuff throughout the arc that was great, right? It was Yo, just a fun Brooke arc. Oh, no, first... another thing. It was Bro, a, it was Thriller Bark right? has the best art style in like an arc. It was great. I think Scott P has the best art style behind it all. But like, <sighs> Scott P is no, good like, too. But, but Thriller Bark, whenever Brooke was introduced and all you heard was him like as the humming swordsman and we didn't know what was going on with him yet and they were just like, dude, that like... In, in yeah, sub like, like, and in dub and even in the panels, it's just it's creepy, man. It's it, in such a good way. I loved it. It's one it was of the coldest one of my designs favorite. too, bro. Like that's what I yeah. mean with the art style. Like when you see Brooke, when you see like the zombies and everything, it was it was I, I really like the art. Hulk <laughs> Gallon had the go on, in the chat. He came in immediately slandering Top Man. Top <laughs> <laughs> Man is nuts. But I will I say know, Moria, crazy. he did oh, annoy bro. me, bro. Especially in the anime, he did annoy me. Yeah, but I, I wanted to uh, like talk him. about the thing playing birthdays and new theories that those shadowy figures are emu. Bro, if those big devils in Thriller Bark are emu, then I can almost guarantee that uh, emu is some type of special devil race. And the fact that Thriller Bark is based on what? The uh, Bermuda Triangle? And all bad things in the sea, pirates, devils, monsters, whatever. We've seen it in Pirates of the Caribbean. It, it's all, it, isn't it all based on the um, Bermuda Triangle? I swear. I think it has some, yeah, some inspiration. Yeah, like the main, like worst portion of the sea in the entire world is the Bermuda Triangle. So I wouldn't put it past Oda to have the origins of the main villain of the story to be from there. So that would make a lot of sense. Gonna, bro, top one is a little crazy though. Like, yo, know, that, that's, <laughs> that's crazy, you, you never, bro. You that's never insane. know with all this. There's no way. There's no way to have it over Enis Lobby, bro. I just yeah, I that's can't. What I'm saying, like, there's impossible. No way. There's no way. Bro, I'm standing on business, brother. I'm telling you. Impossible. I respect it. You never know. Emu could have literally been like we we could literally see a, a chapter coming up soon enough, like from Emu's perspective, where they're just lurking over all of Thriller Bark, and we see the Straw Hats as mini little figures going up against Kuma or some shit like that. Some crazy like thing we never have seen before that gives so much good perspective on Thriller Bark. We never may know. So Thriller every Bark single might be arc we get. Every single arc we get, Thriller Bark gets better. I'm like 100% serious. Like before, when I first watched it, I was like, "All right, this is really good. This is this is amazing." And I did put Annie's Lobby and Marine Ford and like even Dressrosa and stuff like that above it. And but every single arc that we've been getting, where we get like more lore and things like that, there's more like thematic parallels to the significance of Thriller Bark and like what it really like. I and a part of it is also that like while thriller bark was like still coming out like chapter wise that's when strong world dropped as a movie and i think that strong world is also the best one piece movie that has ever been made i don't know if that's a hot take but that's my opinion there but i just love that whole era of like because i mean i love any lobby as well i love saba odi as well but like they i feel like thriller bark is just it just keeps rising higher and higher and higher uh, like how a lot of a lot of people think that Skypea became really, really like prevalent and recontextualized, uh, you know, with what we got a roof piece and things like that. Thriller Bark is just continuing to get better. The more mm -hmm. we learn about the Rocks Pirates, the better Thriller Bark's gonna get. The more we learn about the dawn of the world, the better Thriller Bark's gonna get. Like I'm just I'm fully convinced it's it's top one. I'll stand also, on that. <laughs> for those people who really like the Straw Hats and miss the nostalgia of pre time skip and the uh strides gelling together i'd say thriller bark is probably the biggest arc for that in my opinion in terms of, like team building the straw hats getting along especially when it comes to like gelling in a fight so you know, when when frankie built a bridge as he was crossing it <laughs> sir that was peak that was peak <laughs> This Frankie. And, I mean, I love the the think... iconic villain laughs too. You don't get those in every single arc. We got like four in Thriller Bark. That was. I mean, some people want to dog on that, but I think I think that's hilarious. I you think know yeah, I mean? so, so like because of that, I think there's pros and cons to the anime. Some people don't like that, but like when you when you, bro when you get a scene like um being sake at the end with with broken, I think that's one of the best moments of One Piece in the anime. Facts. When Luffy's just like carefree, just kicking his feet back while like leaning on the piano, and and he <laughs> makes Brooke weep, telling him like, "Oh yeah, we met that guy. We know Laboon. Like, yes, that was that was insane. That was one of the best moments of a character actually joining the crew. We got to see Luffy ask another person if they poop. Like, that was awesome. <laughs> like, uh, I just I, I love their dude. Like, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think we as a panel need to decide whether uh, 
uh, Vex's take was hot or not, I guess. Oh, it's uh, hot. Oh, it's fucking yeah, hot. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Scolding. I do think that, that gets a lot of disrespect. Surface right? of the sun hot. Yeah, I think Thriller gets a lot of disrespect that it might not deserve. I can agree with you for that for sure. But top one? All right, brother. Let's, let's take it's a been, deep breath bro, now. It's, it's been, yeah. <laughs> Especially in the arc. Y'all got to rewatch through. Y'all got to reread no. and rewatch through. I do it at least once a year. It's, it's one of my absolute favorite slices of any anime manga that's ever mm. existed. I love it. The thing, the thing about the thing. Thriller Bark is nothing really, like, important happens no, besides to. the ending with Kuma and hey, Zoro. Of course you say that because of Zoro. Ain't no, no way. <laughs> I'm, I, hey, name story that happened in Thriller Bark. Like, really important. Uh, I mean, we saw two warlords. Yeah. We saw the first ancient giant. We Come learned on. the name of Big Mom. Like we learned about the country of Wano and Ryuma, the sword and, guy. And I would say this: like, this could possibly be Ryuma is a good one. Re- this good could one, possibly I'll say God Valley too. So yeah, if, if that's God Valley, then that's huge. Prince, but we go, uh, go ahead and uh, go to hold up, my uh, Randy said that. Okay, uh, yeah. If it's God the, Valley, the right now. yeah, cool. <laughs> Um, Mr. G, let's hear your take. It's the next Ooh. caller. What's good, guys? <laughs> real, real, real quick, before he before he start, I just want to let you know my lights just flickered a tad. So if I jump out, you know what I'm saying I, I don't know what happened, but I just Randy came from here to y'all. Yeah, Randy, yes, uh, he, Randy trying to join the call. The Shanks Wi-Fi. Okay, big Randy, let's go. Let's let him come through. Ooh, yeah, uh, for the meantime, we can listen to Mr. G's. Uh, tell us what's going on, Mr. G. Add him to the thing. What's good, guys? Uh, good, thank bro. you, guys. Uh, for having me, I appreciate it. Um, not sure if it's much of a hot take, um, but I well, since you brought up Shanks's Wi-Fi, I do feel like the manga adaptation of that, the hockey Wi-Fi, was better than the anime. Ooh. wasn't a, wasn't a big fan of the lightning. You seeing the lightning going across the ocean, hitting Green Bull. Mm-hmm. I would have preferred if you saw Shanks pull out the sword, lightning come out. But then it goes and like you see the black lightning in the background and Green Bull getting the chills and then like it hitting him. You know what I mean? Not not like an actual beam going to him. But that's just that's just one of my uh, my takes on, on that. But great moment none, nonetheless. But um, what do you think about that, Crow? I think that the what the, the I, I can agree with that because I think the anime <laughs> made it feel like a hug. You know what I'm saying? It, it didn't. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't needed, bro. Like it I don't no know. impact. It didn't feel like no impact. It felt like in the in the manga, it felt like he actually got struck by lightning. But yeah, in the yeah. anime, it was like, "Yo, chill out, big dog." So <laughs> no, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. It was hey, still hey, good. The anime, it was still good. What, what did you he? What did you say he used to attack again? It was Wi-Fi hockey. Yeah, Wi-Fi hockey. <laughs> no sword, brother. No, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit back. It's no sword work here. That swordsmanship, <laughs> oh, it's washed. I gave, I gave him the permission, preach. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 I appreciate the takes, though. Vex and uh, and, and, and I, and I agree with that too, bro. Yeah, I agree with it. Did you no, said the manga did it better or the anime did it better? The manga. manga. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Big Randy Troy just came through. Appreciate you for coming through, man. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? To... Sorry, I'm Before late. You, uh... Oh, you're good. You're perfect. Before we even get into it, I just want to say, you might have my favorite intro in One Piece YouTube. <laughs> 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 it's hilarious, bro. About that time. <laughs> yeah, you know what time it is. It, it's about to be that time. It. It's about to get spicy. Spicy. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> oh. yeah. So y'all want to do a couple more uh, callings and then just pivot to what we were originally doing? Because we got some people that joined the Discord. I know they want to get their calls. Yeah, let's let's do that's that's it. Yeah, that's fine. It, it, it's big cap on uh, through the bark though. You know, yeah, don't you know agree. <laughs> like, what, it's because they said that it's not the best, right? It's, it's absolutely the best. <laughs> First of all, Thriller Bark is something that ages like wine. It's uh, it, it's one of those arcs that when it was happening. Everybody was like, I'm ready for the next arc. And <laughs> I, I, I mean, I I, I, I I was there. I was there. I was like, even I was like, ah, eh, you know, until you get to the Kuma part. But even then you're like, what is going on? Because you don't appreciate anything. But when now that we have Wano, we have context for Big Mom, all of the stuff with Ryuma, Moria seems to be 
you know, getting even more relevant than ever. I, I think he's going to end up joining Cross Guild personally, Sweet. but um, because of Perona having spent time with Mihawk, and, and then we'll get you know like all of the. Uh, that makes uh, sense. That would give them an army too. Yeah, we'll get all the all of the warlords uh, uh, that were at Roger's execution probably on Cross Guild. So we'll probably get Dofi at some point too. But uh, regardless, it's uh, you know I'm. It's going to take a while for this video to come out, but I mean I, I'm I'm working on a video which is all about like references that uh, Peter Pan has made like in the story. And Thriller Bark is just like is one of the heaviest arcs that has it. And Oda is like so inspired by by this. It, it's it's insane all the way from the beginning of the story. And, and so you can't say that Thriller Bark didn't have nothing important because it's all it's all there. Like a lot of what the you know, the entirety of what this story is, especially also one of the most important things about Thriller Bark is that it's actually an inversion in a way of uh, uh, kind of setting up everything in the archipelago because you have Moria like doubling down, like, Hey, you're going to lose your crew. You're going to lose your crew. And then once that arc ends, Luffy does lose his crew. So everything that's being set up there, it's a setup arc. Yeah. But it all pays off. So is it the best arc? No, because it's trying to set up <laughs> way too much, but you can't say that it, that it didn't have any impact. Oh no, it definitely did for sure. Mm. And I feel what's even your favorite? If oh, it uh, didn't have impact, as people would say when it came out. I think it was also overshadowed by the ginormous events happening in both Sabayoti, Impel Down, and Marine Four, or all three, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so so we didn't even have time to process it because all of a sudden now Luffy has lost his crew. Ace is like in in jail pretty much and he's about to die and Luffy's like alright so much shit has happened to me I don't know what's going on my life is in a complete disarray but I need to figure shit out one by one step by step so let's try that so I, I think, think that's most what recently aside from like the Gecko Moria stuff that we saw in Hachinosu there's also the fact that like now that we know like what kind of a little bit more of what was going through Kuma's mind when he had those conversations with Perona and with Nami and with Zoro and things like that, I th it's just, it just keeps getting better. Like, uh, it might be a bit of a meme for me to like expect everybody to put it at top one. Some days it's only in my top three, but right now today, the passion that I'm feeling, you know, it's, it's top one for me. Some days top one is Marine Ford. Some days it's Saba Odi. Some days it's stress Rosa, but right now, I firmly feel like it's it's never far from top one for me. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. That's that's a respectable take for sure, no doubt. I mean, I I have to respect it. It's not a terrible life. You didn't say Scott Pia, you know. Now, let me stop. But <laughs> <laughs> I respect the take. I respect yeah, guys. Uh, I won't, I'm gonna let y'all spit. I didn't mean to get too hot, too hot of a take right 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 at the gate or anything like that. I'm gonna hop off. It was perfect. Yeah. Um, Thank you for coming through. If y'all could give me just like one more second, just to be a little bit like a you know like a just do, to shill a little bit. I wanted to remind everybody like you stream. Check out opushop.com. Get you some merch, and then um. If you guys are fans of what we do over at TLA, make sure you head over to the Last Ark YouTube channel this Saturday. We're going to be doing an all-day, eight-hour stream, the Stream of Liberation 2. If you missed the first one in January, come come vibe with us this Saturday. It's going to be fun. Uh, drop the link in the in the chat, Vex, and then you guys go go subscribe yes, to the sir. channel and make sure you guys go check them out this Saturday. Yes, sir. Exactly. And yeah, I want to remind everyone again that this man has not been paid by us. This is his genuine feelings. <laughs> and he actually he actually likes the OPU shop products. I mean, I've heard so many crazy stories about the most immaculate times while wearing the, those merch pieces of merchandise. So please go ahead and cop you got whatever to fight you the want women off you. That's all I'm gonna say. Exactly. <laughs> you gotta fight the women away. They love it. I'm a from the call. I'll, like I said, I'll still be in the in the chat vibing with y'all. Y'all take it easy. Hey, appreciate the take, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to pull a birthday through. This is my first person. All right. All right. How do I do this again? Uh, Please don't come on here son, saying nothing crazy, y'all. For real, for real. <laughs> yeah, but that is, yeah, we got to kick you if you say something crazy, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, let it be know, known that, like, yes, you can come through. Please try not to just... Yeah, yeah no, don't get us demonetized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, birthday, you're live. Let's hear it. What's your take? 
Crown's King, we got you next, by the way. All right. Like and subscribe, everyone. Like and subscribe. Everyone. <laughs> right, like and subscribe. Mike I don't we were talking about tonight. the best arc. Randy, what is your favorite arc in One Piece? Alabasta. Alabasta. Thank Basta. you. That's a good. It's a it's a good niche pick for sure. I'd say. See see an arc with some substance. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen, man, I, I'm not surprised because I know Randy's a huge VV fan, so I'm not too surprised. But and Croc, yeah, man. and Croc, yeah. Croc hey, ha- okay, I have a question for you, Randy. Do you think Croc is a lot more powerful now than he was in Alabasta? I think that people underestimated how powerful he was during Alabasta. So it's uh I I've been I've been saying people who've been sleeping on Croc for a while and people used to laugh when I was like wait until we get his post time skip bounty I said it was gonna be in the billies I said it was gonna be like two billion and then sure enough you know people were pulling up to the stream where we got the uh the bounty reveal because he was one point nine five or whatever he was basically two billion what I I was saying for a really long time so <laughs> I, I felt very vindicated in that moment. Um, as you should, as you should. But, yeah. Uh, no, I, I mean that's that's my goat. I think that uh, you know you can't you can't judge um, you you can't judge a lot of these people that were introduced in the first five years because, um, and I've said this before, but it's like you know Odo only planned to have the story be about five to seven years long. So uh-huh. all of those characters that we see in the beginning are really the. Um, like we're we're seeing the top tiers. So whether or not Oda had hockey in mind or anything like that, you can go back to um the water Luffy fight. There's a moment where like Crocodile gets hit for the first time and he doesn't finish his sentence, but he's like, wait, does he know? Dot dot dot. Implying that like there's there is some sort of power that would be able to hit him that Oda was at least cognizant of. That he was, you know, letting Crocodile speak to in a way, even, you know, in a coy way. But um, so Crocodile definitely knew hockey or at least of it. And um, it's it's just a situation where, you know, Luffy was just getting really lucky in those early years. He figured out, you know, a way without hockey to beat Crocodile. He figured out a way without hockey to beat Anel. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, he's a natural enemy and all that. Mm-hmm. But um, we're, I think another thing that Oda really does is he, um, when someone's ambition is kind of sapped, like they they lose a little bit of their power. So yes, uh, Crocodile, Crocodile was, you know, ambitious to a certain point, but he wasn't, he didn't have the ambition that I think he has now. So it's like he, you know, Stella got his groove back here. He's <laughs> he, he's just he's ready for he's ready for the new world. He, you know, he's letting his hockey flow. He's still as drippy as ever. He's really the emperor. I don't care what anybody says. Like that's he is he is the leader of Cross Guild because uh, Mihawk yeah, doesn't want it. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. Mihawk doesn't want it. Yeah. Mihawk, Mihawk, power. And crocodile is the brains. <laughs> That's is what the, it is. He's the, the buggy wealth. Your is nasty, bro. He's the wealth. Buggy's the fame, and Mihawk's the power. Buggy is the captain. El Capitan. <laughs> he's just he's just the face, man. He's yeah. just the face. But we, we 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 know behind the scenes. We know what it is. Crocodile's the 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 other emperor. Yeah, oh, Luffy's mom. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, uh, Randy, <laughs> a quick question though. I, I do. Uh, I am curious because you like Croc. Do you think Croc was awakened in Alabasta? I just want to uh, hear your thoughts on that. I mean, I think that there's. I, I think there's an argument for it because he he was the first person to kind of allude to awakening. Also, when he was spitting at Luffy, he was saying like, "You you gotta understand that there's levels to this devil fruit stuff." Mm-hmm. So, um. It, but the, you know, the the big thing with Awakening now, and especially with Loki, is is like we don't actually have a a firm grasp on what that is. Like a, what, what a like, Loki yeah, Awakening yeah. is, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I I can sit here and you know we've seen enough Paramecia Awakenings to be like, 
okay, hypothetically speaking, if Bucky awakened, then he would basically have Law's power, right? Because if Luffy is rubber and then can turn someone else rubber, then Buggy, who can split himself apart, should be able to, like, split somebody else apart. So it's just, it's like you just have to take whatever the ability is and then put it upon another person, like, as if they had it. Internal to external, yeah. Yeah, internal to external. So the, um, uh, or, you know, the, the other side of that would be, like, what... Dofi did where he's actually just changing the environment. So like yeah. if Mr. Three awakened, it would be more like Dofi's where, you know, he's like turning the ground into wax. Um, but for Logia awakening, like when I go through the story and I try and look at the Logias and I'm like, okay, what are they doing? That's that that's different. And the only thing that I can find right now is adding sentience. Like and the craziest sign of this recently is um mm, Karasu. Karasu, exactly. Like how is this dude able to split himself apart, right? Turn into crows and then have the crows talk and like like that's that's the crazy thing. But then you start moving and you start looking at things that like happen in Marine Ford and you have things like Kuzan using pheasant beak and you know, he's like turning his ice into a into a pheasant. Um, you have the hellhounds from uh, Akainu. So I think that realistically, the awakening is like you split a part of yourself and then you're able to manipulate that in ways that other people really can't. And most of the time, they're creating animals out of that. So if crocodile creates like a sand crocodile that is like moving on its own, then based on the way I'm saying it, that's actually like the awakening. Now, I, I think that what you're talking about is more like the way the environment was uh, changed in Punk Hazard. Punk Hazard. And all yes, that. yes. So now I, I think this was brought up in, in, in the stream that I just did with Dak or whatever. Someone was asking, like, if I thought that Alabasta was like affected by a previous Suna Suna no me user, like, you know, 900 years ago or something. And mm-hmm. I, th- I mean, like, hey, why not? Right. But, um, we know that the, the the land was already a desert, so there's not anything for Crocodile to really change unless he was holding back the atmosphere. And then once Luffy, you know, beat him, that's why it rained. Now, there is there's an argument for that. There's a couple of different arguments for it. The one that I really don't think it is, which some people I think are reading it wrong, is some people really think that Smoker used the dance powder. He did not use the dance powder. Yeah, it's confirmed I, that he did yeah, but some people some people still think that he did. Yeah. <laughs> so so the only two answers is that one, Crocodile was awakened and he was holding back the rain by changing the atmosphere, which would then, if that's true, would actually gas up Crocodile because it's like, okay, well, he was in a weakened state fighting Luffy in the first place because he was using so much energy to hold back the rain. You know, you could argue that. Um, kind of like Dofi with the cage. Kind of like Kaido holding up uh, Anigashima too. That as well too. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. So that's the that's the same kind of thing there. But um, the other like tin foil thing that I have is that either Vivi has the voice of all things, or she had, or, or she is in some way uh, connected to the ancient weapons or whatever, because the similarities in the way that uh, Shirohoshi is drawn in in the same uh, when she activates her ability in the flashback. And you go back, and and you can't tell this in the anime. It's only in the manga, which is mm-hmm. the you know the the true source anyway. But when you go and you look at Vivi yelling to the sky like "Please stop fighting" and all of that, and you look at Shirohoshi use her ability for the first time, it's drawn exactly the same way with the same action lines, the same expression on the face, and then right after that, it starts raining. So I I don't know. <laughs> So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a thing where Crocodile was holding back the rain. I don't know if it was a thing where Vivi's, you know, unlocked something in that moment and made it rain, or if it's just narrative and it's like, okay, we beat the bad guy and it's just good for the story for it to rain. Okay. That's a good point. I, I, like I, I see how that can make sense. Yeah. Uh, also, I do want to say the voice of all things thing I also noticed, and it's something I noticed with Kobe as well, because it's 
I, I, I personally think that Kobe might have the voice of all things because of this, but he so did too. a similar yeah. thing to Vivi in the sense where he looked at what was going on, the entire war pretty much already decided, but it was just more senseless violence that didn't need to be like being put out in the world or whatever. So he really was just trying to stop it all. And because of that, like a bunch of voices came to his head and stuff like that. He's trying to like hold it back. And at first it was like, drawn off to be just observation hockey but i really think it's something different i don't think observation hockey comes like in in that specific form a bunch if of you're gonna gas up in. anybody it might as well be the person who was introduced in chapter two that is very true for sure all right so before let's get we to continue the... a birthday can, can we yep. hear you now like and subscribe like and subscribe <laughs> I love that we can remind vibe. y'all over and over again. But we really <laughs> want y'all to like us. <laughs> well, we see, yeah, we see the one push, man. I mean, that's nice. All yeah. right, birthday. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back to you. Yeah, yeah we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> real quick, real quick. Uh, just to go back to off of Randy, what Randy was saying, uh, with uh, Luffy fighting Crocodile back. I feel like when I do feel like Oda had the idea of hockey, right? But I feel like w- when the audience finally saw it is when Luffy saw it, when he unleashed it at Marineford. Because after that is when we started seeing everyone doing their hockey shit, you know, and then he got it got introduced, and then that's when we finally got it. But I do believe that, you know, Oda's been hinting at it throughout all the early stuff, you know, Luffy being lucky type of shit, like, you know. And uh, I, I do like that pickup um, from, from you, Randy, uh, on that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things early on in the story that I think are hockey. You know, like when when Zoro beats Mr. One, you can't tell me that's not hockey. Yeah, yeah. Oda, uh, Oda himself could tell me it's not hockey and it's hockey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know it was filler, but like when Usopp had the the sniper fight with the the guy from the the bounty hunter, like that, you know, this, this is an example of early signs of hockey, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, even yeah, if he had Conquer Saki right in Saba Odi, he just, I mean, I guess he didn't really know how to use it or that he was using it, but he definitely had it. Like, he had it since way before, too, because he's been known to be very in tune with animals. And, like, I feel like it's definitely, like, in the Conquer spirit that they can, like, be more powerful than any being, like, around them. So, obviously, like, in terms of animals, they could, like, just feel that raw. Aura. I can't believe I'm using that, that, aura that, 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 that instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, but, right, <laughs> yeah but that whole thing, I feel like Luffy's been used to that for a while now because he was literally growing up training with animals on uh, Dawn Island, right? On uh, uh, like since the very beginning. So he's been through that whole thing. So I feel like he's used to that whole scene of using conquerors like unironically or accidentally. Even yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible it, it would be it would be very Luffy, uh, just like you know, and oh, he's always been thinking outside the box, and that's why I think like uh, especially like in any lobby when he created Gear Two, Three, it's based off of Giants, based off of the CP's uh, Nine moves and stuff like that. Like he had the thing outside the box, and then the fact that we find out now that his Devil Fruit is deals with his imagination and stuff like that. Like it just all ties in, you know, well, like perfectly. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw Yamato unlocked Conqueror's Hockey when she was young, so I feel like Luffy, like, he could he could do it too. Like, we didn't see the exact moment, but when you're out there, I mean, he's, like, out in the jungle with Ace and, and Sabo, bro. It's, like, a lot of dangers that come across, and so I feel like there's definitely a chance that he unlocked that at a young age. Has to be. Because it, it literally happened with Blue Jam and them, right? But I don't think that... No, wait, not that was Ace, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was Ace. Yeah, that was Ace. That was Ace. yeah. So I'm pretty sure something like that happening to Luffy, even though he was very young, he could notice that something was different in the air. I- I'd say. So I I could see somehow that like uh, seven, eight years later, while he's training or just playing around animals, something similar like that happens. I'm like, yo, just like that time when uh you know I was with Blue Jam and Ace just started going berserk. So maybe that's something similar. You know, you never know. And also, he's been, like, literally indoctrinated by Garp since he was a kid. And I'm sure Garp is probably using some form of hockey. Like, obviously, with uh, his, like, uh, Fist of Love and stuff like that. I feel like that's really just, ho- like, hockey sugar-coated. Yeah. So, 
You know, Randy, right. you said that uh, Alabasta was your favorite arc, and I was just like remembering and going back to that arc in my mind. And I think my favorite thing of that arc was the fact that we have the ancient weapons, how you brought up with Croc. And, and I think that moment for me was when I really got invested into One Piece to a different level because at that point, it's now it's, it's there's so much more of a deeper story that Oda has what he's waiting to tell, but he couldn't tell it in full length yet. I think that was really the first moment that kind of gave a big bombshell. I think that might be the most game changing moment in One Piece. When you know, you know, you <clears throat> like and subscribe. Oh, like and subscribe. <laughs> when you when you look at Alabasta, every everything that's end game, everything that we're waiting for, everything that we're we're trying to understand and find out, for the most part, it started there. So it's like that's when we learned about the ancient weapons. That's when we yep. learned about awakening. That's when hockey was, you know, like really like hinted. It was when we first saw our first Vegapunk invention with Lasso. Um, Pax. It, it's just, it, it's like every, everything is, everything is there. It, it's, it all, it all just starts there. So when we're, when we're coming back around as we finish out the final saga, there's going to be a lot of callbacks to that arc. Yeah. And Oda's the king at that, obviously, as we see with Wano, Skypea. We see now with, uh, like, Sabodi and Egghead. And, well, Egg, Egg, Egghead is just, like, a culmination of so many arcs just finally, like, you know, coming to fruition and shit like that. So it's, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Also, oh, the, pon like... the, the Poneglyphs, the Void Century, all of that started in Alabasta. Very true. And we get... One of the best, one of my favorite uh, ladies in the series, Robin, you know, like. True. Facts. Very true. And her joining the crew, I'd say was probably one of the most shocking things for me. I really yes. didn't consider her joining the crew at all. And when I like saw her joining the crew, I was like, yo, that's crazy. The Straw Hats really got someone that OP and powerful just like that. That OP and OP. Exactly. <laughs> and even how she joined too she just showed up on she their ship up. and was yeah, like, she just was like right up. What's, I'm, I'm with you guys now like you know like, and they all they all you know, she's like don't don't move i got you like i'm gonna fuck you guys up this shit was crazy bro the funniest thing to me was the assumptions that the crew made of the fact that luffy did something to her and everyone was pissed at him like from zoro obviously sanji was pissed but like it, it i just found it very funny i'm not gonna lie but uh, yeah, uh, Crow, you want to move to uh, the is like there, head predictions? Or, is there I, any I'm more not... um, callers or no? Yeah, there's one more left. So we can just get this one. Oh, is there? Last caller and then um, just uh, oh, it's crowns. Yeah, both. yeah, we can move forward after that. But yeah, we can bring bring them in, then we can uh, just stop callers for the time being, and maybe mm -hmm. hop back to them later on. Let me go ahead and bring them in here. Bet. Uh, let's see. I forgot how I did it just that fast. How interesting. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Crown caller. You're in. Hello, hello. Oh, yes, sir. What's, what's, what's good? What's good? Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. I heard you say you got three piping hot takes. Let's hear them. Let's hear them all. Okay. Uh, first one, real easy one. It's a little bit of a hot take, but I think some people will agree. I think the number one question that never needs to be asked again by the OPU by One Piece fandom is will X join the Straw Hats? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> X Drake? No, will X Drake join the Straw Hats? Oh please not. Please no. <laughs> please, <laughs> please no. Everybody from I'm... Carrot to Yamato. I've heard Mama <laughs> Lisa, you 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 well, they, were, they, they were officially asked though. Yeah, but I think I think we're done. I think I, I, I think the crew is real solid and nobody, like, even people saying Vegapunk and Bonnie at this point, I'm like, let's just not. <laughs> okay. Bonnie is the is the last solid one. Yeah, I would, I would prefer yeah. Bonnie Revolutionary and Army to, Captain to X-Drake. See, I, 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 X Drake, I, I don't, I don't want him to join this. No, no, he didn't mean X Drake. He, he just meant like, X like X brain. person, like yeah. Yeah. random. Yeah. As in, like the whole, <laughs> the whole templated idea of somebody joining the Straw Hats. Yeah, whoever it may be. Yeah, no yeah, X Drake. Yeah, yeah. We don't need, we don't need bombs on the crew. We don't need that one. As you so, can yeah. tell, you know, you're just saying X got us all, all you know, some PTSD <laughs> there because we all think of X Drake, bro. We're like, oh no. Like, okay, I, 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 I was like, weird. Like, 
I wanted Caribou to join the Straw Hats. Caribou. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, not, not guilty of it. <laughs> yeah, I think Caribou would have been fun. Wait, not car- Caribou, like wet haired Caribou? Caribou. Goo okay. Man. Yeah. Wet haired Caribou. Why? Goo Man. Goo Man. Flevin says, Emu for Nakama. Nakama. That's crazy. Oh, <laughs> Maybe if this was Naruto. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Oh, oh, it's Second hot take. We're getting a little get a little spicier. All right, let's hear it. I think Dragon having a, any kind of devil fruit or or superpower will ruin his character. It's it, it, uh-huh. he instantly becomes the most boring person in the world. Wow, no, that's that's a hard one. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. So it, to, to add on to it, all right, because we it's it's almost confirmed that the, the man has wind powers. I would like to hear Crownless. What is your substitute uh, in case he doesn't have a devil fruit or some kind of power like that? Like two show is a tactician. Wind. Oh, you want him to be weak? You don't want him to be strong at all? You, like nothing. I, He's Garp's son, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I want him to be like Usopp level. What? Get out of here. Oh, no. <laughs> I want him to be a human who is outsmarting the government. That's a okay. hot take for with, sure, with bro. all of due respect, piping. I don't the think mind is the most powerful would muscle. have a hate moment for someone <laughs> if they That's were right. Usopp's level of strength. No, That's all maybe a little bit because he was on. He was in. I think he was like in the Marines, right? And he was at somewhere level. Like I, he could take a punch. That's fine. I, mean, I don't want he could, take, he could take a magma punch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little special, right there. Right. Just, just a little bit of defense. I don't want. I don't want him. I don't think he should have any fights at all. Wow. Nobody slander this up, Cam. Come on, bro. <laughs> that was a slander. <laughs> oh, 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 I think Usopp being a regular human is his most endearing trait. Yeah, 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 but that's like, not he, Dragon though, right? Know. Dragon is is somebody who's going above and beyond, trying to change the world at, a, at the highest Bro, level. I, I, I think, think hold on, from what we, wait, we, wait, wait. we need a pause. Uh, like, hold on, Kev is slandering our name. Okay, we literally just <laughs> talked about Usopp as soon as he came. We were we were <laughs> for like an hour, not slandering anything. Can we can we please not talk about that bum? Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I think what makes him the most dangerous man in the world is he has the info on the government that's going to take them down. Mm. And that's, that's, I think that's, we've, that's all he's ever needed. Uh, so I think we've seen I, I think portions from Dragon, like when he came and saved Luffy from Smoker, and Smoker literally backed down from him. I don't think he's going to back down from somebody. That's no Usopp's I see level. that you as a level saying? of like respect thing more than Zane is mighty than a sword. Huh? Zane, you unironically using uh, low count smoker as a feed is hella funny. Bro. I'm just saying, it shows that he got hockey, bro. He, got <laughs> yeah. he can touch him. It, That's what it, I think. The and it thing. shows that like smoke, like smoker's not gonna back down from anybody. He's not. He's not getting out of here. That was your last take. Let's hear. Let's hear. Let's hear. If Law lives to the end of the series, I'm taking a full point off the series. It goes to a nine out of ten. <laughs> Oh, oh he's, God. He's, he's going to give Zoro the immortal no, I, surgery. I, I agree with this one. I agree with this one. I, I, I actually not, think not taking a full point on, but I, I, I do think that I don't think Law should make out this series alive. I think that Giving Law's Zoro the immortal too surgery. To, to die eventually, so if he does it, it's going to feel like... He has too many right. flags, right? Like, I yeah. mean, he literally has it yeah. written on his hand or, or on his tattoo or whatever, so... <laughs> I just think that the immortal, like, imagine introducing, like, a surgery that, that you die when you use. And yeah. it just never happens. That just, that would feel very weird. In, in my well, opinion, also, he's I the could... most boring character in existence. Right, relax. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, you're wilder now. You're wilder. Right, <laughs> that's an on-take backstory. You should have started with that one, bro. But, like, that's the hot see, like, I definitely expect Dragon himself. to have some sort of a devil fruit, though. The wind it, may not be, it may not be the wind, wind fruit, because Oda is petty like that. It'd be like, oh, everybody's expecting this. Yeah. So he'll find some sort of mythology that has wind powers, and then it'll be yeah. like some weird zone. Yeah, I'm I, guessing I, I, it's I, a I, myth. I'm, I'm thinking it's a mythical. I always say it's going to be storm, oh, something with more like storm related. But yeah, I can see mythical. Oh, like like weather. Like you put, 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 yeah. weather. if you if you think about it, Dra- oh, yeah. I think Dragon might have been an admiral, and. Yeah. All the OG admirals had Logias. Yeah, I think yeah, Logia so, just because of the Marine yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. So, uh, um, Crownless, I gotta ask you. First of all, we appreciate you. You've been supporting us for as long as I can remember. So it's good to actually hear you talk. And those takes were so good. I just gotta ask, like, give me four other characters that can't make it in the series. I just want to hear your thoughts. 
Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm allowed to well. kill a couple people. Four? Uh, you no, know what? Oh, the four is four. tough. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Mihawk can go. Mihawk? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Mihawk's got to die. Let him go. Let him go. Keep going. Keep Coca. Uh... Honestly, I I could I could like get rid of uh what's his what's his face, uh I think kids gotta go too. I love kids. He's already been through enough. Man. Kid, kid is the new age white beard, bro. Like let's let's stop it. White beard, nah, he's the new Haguma. <laughs> <laughs> He's a come with a bear, bro. He's like the bottom of the ocean getting eaten by a sea king right now. Chill on my dog. Is that, bro? Let, let, let two, it more, go. two more, two more, two more. Vega Punk is too valuable to keep to the end. So he's well, let me ask you, before that's, you continue, no, that's, that's do you think that that means him and all of his satellites or just the Stella? All satellites. They all got to get okay. shut down. Yeah, all, I, 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 I kind of agree, bro. I kind of, yeah. Okay, I do I think he's too valuable to come with the strides for sure. And he knows too much. Well, all right, one more. Let's hear. And uh, just to round it out, uh, let's go for. Give us a straw hat. Make it spicy. Make it spicy. Make it spicy. Make it spicy. Make it Make it spicy. Make it spicy. What's sumo person that hangs out, Kizaru? Um, Sentamaru. Sentamaru. Yeah, Sentamaru's got to die. So do not go. Can do going over there, I thought he was already. I thought he was. Yeah, I thought he was dying. I haven't thought body. about. I haven't thought about him in years. So. <laughs> 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 for sure, for sure. Okay, that was some nice takes. Appreciate that. That law was definitely interesting. The the, the boring part. Um, I mean, law is the boring part of One Piece. Hey, oh, no, man. but no, but right, with right. the the Hold law uh, like going away, the dying thing, I can actually kind of see it. Like, what if? Because I've been saying it for a while. What if instead of just like using the immortality surgery on someone else, he gives up his life to reverse one? So like he can Ooh. make someone go from immortal to mortal instead. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Ooh. Like, Ooh. Emu, or cooking, or cooking, now. boy. <laughs> I've heard that before with emu. Yeah. Like, so like, what if he just reverses it instead? Because yeah, I, obviously, like. If you can give life, you can also take it. I think so. I think it's gonna happen. I'm like whatever. I'm gonna step out for like five minutes. I'll be right back. Yeah. I, I just hate how he disrespects every straw hat, even Chopper. Oh yeah, the yeah, Chopper disrespect good. is not tolerated. I I agree with that. Especially at the end. Especially at the end of existing. Wano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will he, say he yeah. disrespects them by existing because yeah. he does. Like especially when he was sailing with the crew, it used to get me so mad because he's literally every straw hat. <laughs> He's yeah. a doctor. He's a swordsman. He was telling everybody where to go, so he was navigating. Um, he's every straw hat, but worse. He, he's every straw hat. He, he's like he's sneaky and and coming up with plans and things like Sanji. He's smart like Robin. And, uh, and he's already a captain like Luffy. Like it, it's it's crazy. In kind of a Does way, bro, even have a laugh. Really the opposite of Luffy in like the most unique ways because. Like, in that certain sense, you can see that, like, with all those skills, Law, like, and obviously because of his personality, he likes to typically either work a lot. Well, he has a crew that, like, he's loyal to, but he usually can get stuff done on his own and, like, is able to work solo and likes to fly solo at some points. Whereas Luffy, like, down and outright, like, since Arlong Park has been saying that, like, he is nothing without his crew. I don't bet. So I I do see like like in a contrast there and it is very interesting so it is cool. It just it just made for boring storylines when you have him with the other straw hats. True. Yeah, because I've he never, can only do so much. I've well, never he was stealing he was on screen. It was boring storylines, but bro, oh that God. punk hazard thing where he switched all the straw hats, bro, that was that was hilarious. Yo, was terrible! Oh my God, I hated that <laughs> shit, bro. I'm not good, bro. I, it was. It was I had two I, things. I think I two Law things carried story. punk hazard so hard. It's crazy, bro. Oh, he, yeah, he was definitely the most interesting part of the arc. But my two biggest things I hate in stories: personality swaps. And fighting clones. Those are my biggest pet peeves when any artist does that. Like we so I was it, off, bro. The, the Seraphim aren't fire? Not clones like that. Okay. Those that's different. Like it, DC Universe does a lot. Like evil versions of themselves. Bizarro like, versus yes, Superman. Oh, Owl Man versus <laughs> Batman. Man, yeah. you you just don't like the the in fighting games, you don't, you just don't like to fight in the same guy, bro. I, hate, I, I disconnect every time. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> 
Get out of here, Law. I don't, I've been playing with Law lately. Wait, wait, so. wait. Crisis, crisis on two Earths went hard, bro. Let's let's not. Uh, that shit was that shit not, was so hard. I, I will agree. Yeah, let, let's uh, let's not this Crisis on Two Earths, man. That's one of the best jail movies. So you don't like Reverse Flash? No, I don't. None of it, bro. Is I that like a, but okay, that's like uh, that's like a comic book trope, right? It's kind of different. Though. I feel it's like in One Piece, it was more of a joke. Wait, what? Yeah. You, talking about with the personality swap stuff. I mean, yeah, yeah it was definitely a joke, but it got. Frankie and Chopper's body was the best part. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When Robin was like, "Do not make that face." Yeah, <laughs> ever, yeah. that, was that was great. I think, bro, <laughs> Sanji and Nami was crazy, and even though it went too far, I think it was hilarious. Yeah, bro. it definitely went too far, which seems to be a common theme with Sanji. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, he be doing that, bro. He be doing that. Pray for my boy. They killing his yeah. character, man. They yeah, really right. are. It's all right. He can just he get back his arc. It's okay. That's it. That's the only, only, only uh, like negative thing for me. Like that is because yeah, you gotta far. stop him from taking over Zoro. It's the most popular. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't have that trope. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Captain, I'm just saying. Oh, Zoro ain't either, brother. You can't get lost every arc and be the captain of the crew, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> it just don't work like that. That's what navigators is for. Ain't she important? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Well, all right. Um, well, the original premise behind this stream before we pivoted to the call in show was gonna be um egghead ending and L Bath predictions, right? That is something else as well, but I don't know if we'll be able to pull I don't know, up. yeah, I don't know if we're gonna do that. That's, that's, yeah. that's a lot. It'll be so, uh, Randy, which you've yeah. been a very esteemed theorist in the community, I would like to say, I want a couple of ideas that you have for what will happen at the end of Egghead going into Elbath. Hmm. Uh, let's see. How am I feeling about things right now? Um, Let me just interject with something really, really quick. Let me see if I could lead you a little bit, you know. So in the end of the last chapter, you know, we had a lot of bit different things going on. You know, so let's talk about let's talk about the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the most important thing. Nobody's gonna say, bro. I know what you're saying. What I'm gonna say. He's gonna uh, talk top about top man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, how about this, Randy Troy? Who's the strongest gore say in your eyes? Easy. Uh, Warkiri. Work. Oh. Easy. Oh. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> See, Man, we just, like just made right Don Shaw right. very happy, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna be he's honest. The, I agree with that, bro. This is I agree he's the closest too, to the sun. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. I, like, I don't. Like, you know, I'm not a power scaler. You know, I'll, I'll come out here like super hot fire. You know, like I'm not a power scaler, <laughs> but I mean, but but if I've got to, if I have to. I'm just going to I'm going to take a look at it from the, like if they're the elder planets, right? It's it, either you know it, if we're going heliocentric, you know, or otherwise, you know, it, it's it, it's either in, in this situation, you know, it's going to be relevant to whoever's closest to the sun, so it's just going to keep going backwards. So if it's Mercury is number 1, then you have Venus at number 2, which is Zoro's opponent mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. have uh, an earth which might be um <laughs> that's a great super chat um the um <laughs> bro, dude, MVP, bro. Man, 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 the man. MVP, bro. that boy up to something um so shout out to double o flevins the um uh we don't have an earth you know maybe that's emu um uh Mars is Sanji's opponent in my eyes. Uh because Makes sense. He's a, Sanji's he's uncle. Yeah. yeah. No, Sanji's uncle. No, no, no. no. Sanji's uncle. uncle. It's cause his, Sanji's mom has gotta be Sanji's uncle, right? No, no, no. He's not fighting no worm, brother. That's that's some <laughs> type stuff. No, nah, he's fighting the, nah. the big bird, the big bird yeah, motherfucker. Mars. Mars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the one he's the one on the crew that can fly, so he's yeah, gonna yeah. fight a bird. And that's I I had Sanji versus Mars for a while, so I've been saying Mars was going to be a bird, um, and because it just makes sense, Sanji is just he's the aerial fighter. So, um, and then 
after that, it's going to be Shai Halud, you know, Lisan <laughs> Al-Qaib. Yes, sir. You know, yeah. um, and then uh, Saturn is the weakest because it's like, why would you, you know, you would send your weakest troop member in the first place. So it's like, if we're trying to balance the scales on everybody else, then we would want to see the weakest first and then realize like, oh wait, everybody's stronger than this guy that was already a menace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's how I feel about it as far as like, you know, scaling the power. Now, as far as who fights Jupiter, who fights um, uh, Saturn, you know, who, who fights who, like uh, that doesn't even, that doesn't even matter to me. I don't even care. <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. I only I only know that Sanji's going to fight Mars, Zora's going to fight Venus, and um, that's that's that. But I, as far as like theories for how things are going to end, right now, uh, you know, I know people were talking about it earlier that Egghead is filled with a bunch of um, callbacks and inversions to other arcs. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, the the biggest one that was like the most obvious from the start was archipelago so yep. uh the now we've also got um any's lobby vibes here and we've got um some thriller bark elements but it's it's mostly a combination between um archipelago and and and, 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 and any's lobby i mean yeah. there's even there's you know you you can really stretch it out and be like okay there's some marine fort here there's some out whatever it doesn't matter the main two are archipelago and any's lobby so any's law um archipelago and any's lobby both ended with we've got to get the hell out of here so that's that's what i want and that's what it seems like we're getting you know like jim Bay just grabs the and was just like hey we don't have time for this like i i love that I love that sort of tension and you know, I love the stakes. So let's, let's keep that momentum going. We need to regroup. We now see what the highest authority is. And now we have to basically go and understand how we're even going to uh, tackle this in the first place. Luffy cannot hit them. So that means that there is a trick to hitting them which I'm sure Shanks knows and will be able to give that information to Luffy. And whether or not that also includes being able to do these summoning circles and teleport all over the world, or we end up with the Niku Niku on our side, because we already have, you know, an inversion crew in the story, which is Blackbeard. Blackbeard's got a teleporter, so we need a teleporter. Kuma is definitely dying. Yeah. Um, who do you, so who, I'm, who do you I'm think you're getting the, the death fruit then? Vivi. Baby? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I heard I heard a I heard a, a theory that uh they that the sunny would get the fruit. Yeah, but they, I, I don't but then it's gonna sink. I don't care. Like it's not that that doesn't make any sense to me. Like Oda would have to do some crazy like backpedaling to make me believe that a ship can eat a fruit and not sink. Oh well it's wood. Like no 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 no. If you eat a fruit, you sink. I don't care if you're, you know, inanimate or animate. Like that is, it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's the I, I like in, in theory, I like the idea, yeah, but, yeah. It, but at that point, like that is not going to be sailing, and it also kind of contradicts Frankie's dream, which is to have it sail in the first mm -hmm. place, and like you get to the final island. Um, so Vivi's already on a blimp with Morgan's. To, area, yeah, facts. Um, heading to Egghead because Morgan's wants the scoop. He missed out on O'Hara. He's not going to miss this. And um, uh, I'm fully believe that Lily had the fruit in the past and used the Niku Niku to send the Poneglyphs to every island. So if Vivi gets it, then it's inherited will. She's getting the same fruit that her ancestor had, and she'll be able to then uh, send everybody all over the world where they need to be, whether that's, all right, we got to go to Marijoa, uh, Marie Joa to, you know, like figure some stuff out. We got to head to Wano and stop them from getting Pluton. We got to do this. Like, boop, boop, boop. Like, that's it. Um, I, I am a firm believer that like that, something like that could happen at the end of the story where Oda literally ends up like island jumping to the point where like, say for example, Luffy has to get so huge to the point where he can literally traverses the entire one piece world and he can just hop around from one island to the next 
Like that would be insane. And it, it's something that could theoretically happen. And it's also just up to Oda. And that's what I love about Gear 5 the most. It's literally Oda's decision. He can do whatever he wants. We're in the final saga. We need fast travel. Yeah, so, if I, I was just we, thinking we the need, same thing, bro. You need that. Through. You need that yeah. RPG fast travel, bro. Yeah, my fears already got it. He can't. He can't one up us like that. And uh, until I see otherwise, I feel like Shanks has some way to teleport also. And I think he can. <clears throat> I, I think he can do a version of those summoning circles. But um, the uh, the the other thing that I'm thinking of is when Saturn actually hit Kuma. I'm figuring that he like poisoned kuma and that's that's slowly eating him on the inside so like as we were sailing away kuma's going to die and then he's going to be the mary of like the marian version and as we get to elbaf we're going to do a viking funeral for kuma oh that'd be nice and bonnie will be with us and um you know we'll figure all uh, uh, figure all of that out The, the fruit will end up on the ship something like that um and vegapunk's gotta die too so but i think vegapunk's gonna live on through his consciousness in a in a computer well let me ask you this now that we're talking about the devil fruit and you brought up bunny do we think that bunny can eat a fruit because now that we know that her stuff is like the product of like those experiments do we think that she could eat a fruit on the side as well second devil fruit Mm mm-hmm Damn, maybe. but that's, with her blood, I, I, maybe. No, that's something new. I've never had anybody ask me that question. Um, I don't know because the other <laughs> thing too with that is like we need to um, uh, we need clarity on what Blackbeard did, like because yeah. it, it like if the you know the greatest lie that the the world ever told was that you'll die if you eat two fruits and people have just been listening to it and then Blackbeard's just out here like yeah that's a lie I can eat as many as I want and I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, like we don't know, like it could it could be that, bro. That um, very well could be like emu or gorse propaganda. Like you can't eat two fruits at once. Yeah, like, I don't see why I don't see why have him put that over Whitebeard though. Whenever he took his fruit, like put that veil over Whitebeard. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see why he'd do that. See, my thing is that he wanted to put him in complete darkness. So because of that, he's able to maybe immerse himself with said darkness and do something. Because I'm still like like believing on the lines of the fact that it has to do with something with his fruit. Which is why it's specifically geared towards Blackbeard and why he's the only one that can specifically have two devil fruits. It's because of the first one he has. Which is why he's been trying to search for it for so long. I think that's the reason why. But... I don't know. We'll, we'll, we still have too much to figure out. It's one piece. Uh, as uh, JJ, what's your quote? More questions than answers? Yes. <laughs> That's the one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Still the lines, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I, I want to say, I uh, mean to say it for a while, but Danny Man said it. Shout out to like almost 60 of you for joining the stream. Thank you so much for everyone who's uh being in here uh active in the chat we really see each and every single comment so we really do appreciate it uh shout out to each and every single one of y'all and yeah make sure to like these stream keep those likes up because we're trying to get as many people as possible yo we we seven away from 50 yo so let's get it there's you know there's a few of us yo just going off of uh the the topic of the ending of egghead um i do think we are going so Randy, you had mentioned um, like different arcs that deal with Egghead and how you know it's coming up. One big one I thought is like the perfect reverse of is Ohara, right? Egghead is I've been calling it the reverse Ohara because mm-hmm. Ohara, the you know they, it was the knowledge, the tree of knowledge. They had the people there, scientists. They knew everything. They knew about the voice entry and stuff like that. And then what happened? Buster Gall came. Destroy them, shut them up, right? Now we're here at Egghead, and um, all this knowledge from Mohara is Egghead, Egghead in Punk Records. Fucking, we don't know what Vegapunk's gonna say, but we do know that it's something to deal with the Void Century, and we know that he had access to said information because that was also in Elbath, which he has visited before. The government has the biggest. Um, Buster Call to date 
at Egghead right now, and they're trying their best to shut it down. Shut it down. But the worst thing that's going to happen to them is all this information is going to go out. And once it does, not only that, but um, people are going to find out Gorosei are the demons. Um, the government's been lying about everything, been holding back everything, and it's going to really start off like this whole uh, domino chain effect. Reaction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chain reaction that, you know, that's when you're going to see Dragon like, I'm making my move, or like he's been waiting for that, you know what I mean, or, so, or something like that, right? But like it's reversal art because you're not not just that, but a Buster Call got defeated. That hasn't happened like that that the public knows of. So it's just you know, it's just something that I've been coming up with. I've been thinking like this is perfect because all this information has to go out, dude. There's no way you know what I mean. <laughs> like like he ha he made punk records, the fail safe, everything. Like it just it just makes perfect sense to me, but. We'll see what point, happens. I feel like the Buster Call is two more uses away from being a hype tool because yeah. people have survived that thing how many times now? Robin four. She had four right now, bro. That's nuts. Four. Three or four. Three or four. Okay. I, right. I think it's <laughs> three, right? <laughs> it's three. This is it's number three. three. This is number three. This is number three. three yeah, it's number three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, horror. If you can't, if you, if you can't stamp one of the movies, though, Robin is that, that four. Adam, bro. <laughs> hey but uh i did see one good question in the chat coming from uh why Hus, and he was talking about the name of the ancient kingdom i think self-explanatory uh randy what do you think the name of the ancient kingdom should be or what do you think it is it doesn't matter what its name is <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, it, it, i i really i don't care uh, I, I don't want to sit here and like uh, and, and think about. It. I mean, I'm sure it's it's going to be something that we've already seen. Like mm -hmm. it's something we've already been told. Um, because wait, so okay, so wait, Randy, the first time I, I think I talked to you like years ago, um, and I think you said like you don't like to think about the end game stuff, right? So is that like kind of why? Because if if you don't want to talk about end game stuff, we just you know we'll just make it clear right now. No, I mean yeah. we can. I mean we could we can. We can talk about it and, and, and spitball things like that doesn't matter. But it, it's like I don't get stressed on what the name of the ancient kingdom is. I'm more interested in like the what it was, what it stood for, what happened to it mm -hmm. and who's going to give us the information about it. Because it's like I'm going to be disappointed if we get it from Vegapunk because I want it to be Robin that says it. Mm hmm. Like, okay. it, it, I, I feel like, like it's it. yeah. this is a this is a complete um, if this is supposed <laughs> to be O'Hara and we're going to invert it and all this stuff like then this is Oda's time to let Robin shine. I don't care. Even though Vegapunk was set up in 2006, you know, and even further back 2002, if you want to take Lasso and Alabasta, but like he was name drop in 2006. But the Robin was in the story way longer. Her whole role and, and goal in this story is to uncover the truth of the, of the world and her mentor and, and a father figure, like her hero look, like got shot for this information. She watched it. Her whole like island got burnt down for knowing this name. So I'm going to be mad at Oda if we get to this thing and Vegapunk says it. Because I feel like that just nerfs Robin completely. Like, she needs to steal the microphone. You know, if the transmission gets cut off or something like that, like, I need her to say it. I need a whole full double page spread where she tells us the name of the ancient kingdom. And it's like, give her that moment, give her her flowers, show her why, show us why she was uh, so important years ago. Yeah, because I, I made a theory recently, like, I think a month ago or two, two months ago. And I talk about, I think Robin already knows the name of the Ancient Kingdom. Where, Max. like, from the Pontyglyph that she read um, when she was a kid, right? When she had to learn how to read it. So I think she might have learned it from that, just how Clover knew it. So it makes she sense. Was like, she was eavesdropping could... on yes, everything so. that they were talking yeah. about back then. So yep. she knows yep. everything that they knew. 
Yep. Yeah. It's not just that, but I feel like there's also like itty bitty hints and stuff that she's not talking about that's being put inside all the different poneglyphs she's been reading. <laughs> like, how many different poneglyphs has she read by now? She's read the one in Alabasta, uh, one in Fishman, Fishman. Island, uh, one in Zoe, uh, uh, the Whole Cake Island, the three of them. Then mm-hmm. there's the uh, two Wano ones. If her, there was one that she found before Alabasta. Yes, there's even those. And then the Sky PO one as well. Mm-hmm. So, like, how much information does she know that she's not telling us? Like, she too much. Could... Too much. Uh, Way too much. I hope she's writing it's it It's like that scene right before, uh, you know, Egghead, where she's looking at Luffy like, hey, do you want to know everything? Bro, and she, he's yeah. like, he's nah. like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's how she moves. She yeah. moves like that. She's just got all the information. It's just like, yeah, I, I know it, everything. And... I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to just hold tight. Yeah. You unless I'm asked, when unless I'm asked, or yeah. when asked, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. by Luffy, yeah. Those, her her lips that. gotta loosen up. I couldn't believe oh. that she knew about oh. Pluton that whole time. My goodness. All right. So she fouled. She's around forty pond moves too. That's that's actually nuts. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> yeah, we we can do it. Yeah, JJ, we can do it. All right. Cool. Um. You bring it on screen. On screen. I mean. Um. Yeah. So how do I how do I do that? You just got to bring the image up uh, and then to the though. middle. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Maybe we can uh, really like push that one. All right. Yeah. We can. Uh... Yeah. But we can do the start bench cut though, for sure. Oh, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah. All right, so do we want to do uh, normal topics or? No, we're going to do his favorite theories first. All right. But before we do that, Randy Troy. All right. Now there is one I have to include in here because I think it's kind of a staple of you and your channel, but. Can you, you give to, me you two or three the of your... Oh, is my mic? Uh, oh, okay. SBC's up? Yeah, I'm going to give it to him. I just want to know first so he don't give me no skewed answer. <laughs> ah, <laughs> what are your okay, favorite see, theories of your own? Give me your top three. Uh, my favorite theories? Yeah, that you've made. That you've made. Um, that we're going to have a uh, Davy back fight with the Cross Guild. Okay, mm. one. It's fire. That is- um, and that's how Zoro is going to fight Mihawk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I like that. And we're going to lose a round, and Buggy's going to steal Zoro. Oh, God. Because Zoro oh, was, a, was initially supposed to be on uh, Buggy's oh, crew in the initial notes. Yeah. He might um, be a traitor. Hmm. Yeah, that's be a very cool. funny callback. I can't lie. Is it him or, or, or Jinbei? I wonder. There's there there there's a lot to that one. There's it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty layered. So oh, hey, Randy, Randy, I'm sorry to uh, like cut you off, but Crow, there's no way you're just gonna slide Jinbei's name in there like out of nowhere. No, I'm just kidding, just, man. I so thought it was fly, going to be You did it so quick, no, too, no, Crow. No, no. That was a quick jab. I thought it was gonna be Jinbei, but we might have some, uh, some that's nasty crazy. discussions. Crow, that's crazy. Okay, there's the there's pirate Zane, Zane, Okay, this is Robin. <laughs> Nico Robin is a traitor. <laughs> There's no way. She is a traitor, I'm telling you. There's no way, bro. There's yeah, absolutely no way. Listen to Kuzon. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no way. All right, that's one. Let's let's get another a couple more for me, Randy Troy. Um Yeah, so that's um that's one of my favorite ones. So if you haven't seen that one or you want to know more about that one, that video is on the channel. Um, sure. My, I mean, my my main agenda and you know and thing I've been theorizing for you know, twenty some years is that VV's coming back. So and the, like all the parameters and things that go about that, I talked about it earlier. VV gets the Niku Niku. Like uh, I love that. Um. Okay. I, I do agree with that. The fact that as soon as Vivi comes even onto the like straw hat ship at all, like the minute she sets foot like on a floorboard, she's staying on the ship. She is a crew member, in my opinion. Facts. Yep. So I I, I, I can definitely agree with the sentiment. All right. So all right, Vivi joined the straw hat. Yeah, I think was- we're gonna just throw this third one in ourselves because I think that the law and the sword connection yeah. is a big one, at least associated with your channel, right? Uh, I mean, it was one of the 
uh, one of the oh, first man. big uh, big ones. So I mean, yeah. if you don't, if you would prefer one over, but wait, this is what? No, nah, I can't let you pick because then you are gonna. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, yeah. no. Okay, no, this is this is like we got. This. But if he picks the yeah, if he picks the theories, it kind of like he's picking one to cut. Yeah. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Every time we have a guest on, we try to do a start bench cut where you take one theory, you start it, that's your favorite one. You throw another one on the bench, and the other one gets cut for good. It's gone forever. Um, so out of those <laughs> three you just named, uh, let's hear it. Start bench cut. Um, starting, so this is like what I, I want absolutely to happen. Mm-hmm. That's yes. That's, yeah. More then or it's... what theory you think like you believe the most? It's definitely like heart wrenching because they're your own theories, right. which is why it's very like uh, crazy. Because we we've even had Par do this, and uh, Par <laughs> is such a great human being. That man was melting internally. It, it, it was, it was <laughs> but yeah, Par back is tough for all of them, bro. Yeah, back is like oh, oh man. Did Dak, different story. <laughs> we we can talk about Dak for forty minutes and how he was on oh, complete meltdown for his SBC, but. Oh, <laughs> love you, Dad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm starting. You know, VB coming back. That's that's just. I feel like that's not uh, like that's that's a layup of a theory anyway. So it's yeah. like that. That's no matter what, she's gonna reunite with them in some way. Mm. Um, so there's that. Then I guess benching cross skilled, uh, Davy yeah. back. And cutting laws and sword as much as I love it and as as fun as it is, like that that's just it it doesn't it doesn't move me in the same way that the that the other ones do because the the thing is is like I love the connections about sword, like I love everything that that brings because the laws and sword theory like isn't so much about law as much as it is about garp and it's like hyping garp up. So it's like I spend way more time in that theory talking about Garp than I do law. Um, And it's just trying to find an angle for there to be good people in the story that are within the Marines trying to stop the world government. So it's like and then I'm always looking for the connections. I'm looking for the patterns. I'm looking for ways to um, uh, draw things together try and find you know connections this is how we figured out that tama was going to be a kurazumi that was a big w it's how we knew that sukiyaki was hitetsu it's just you know you gotta you gotta look you gotta find it and there are too many things that were like taking characters that we already knew were in sword and putting them directly with law it's like all of this all of this stuff somehow points at this guy he was at Rocky Port with Kobe. He was he, his first panel ever. He shared with Drake for, you know, it, if Kuzan has anything to do with it in any way, like this dude was pulling up to, to Punk Hazard. Why? Maybe to talk to law. I don't know. Corazon was clearly in sword, uh, you know, in, in some fashion. It's just like if he was a secret Marine or even if he just aided the Marines later on. Like I could totally see a scenario now where he's swimming with Beppo and <laughs> ends up running, running into Sengoku again. And, you know, maybe he wasn't folded in then, but he gets folded in now. It doesn't matter. I don't know, but it's like, um, could law end up with the cross guild potentially, you know, it's like he was gassing up buggy, like as if buggy was something to, be worried about so it's like was Oda trying to tell us that he's going to end up on empty bluffs and that's why we haven't gone back to the cross guild in a little bit maybe but also Sengoku right after like literally like if you're reading the volume and you're turning the page like you're going to go from Beppo leaving Winter Island with Law to Sengoku saying hey I'm going to go find the cross guild and that's a that's a narrative technique like whatever a lot of times whatever the next scene after something is it's like these two scenes are connected they're going to be conjoined 
Law has history with Sengoku. They're both connected to Corazon. They're going to run into each other in some way. Maybe it's at Empty Bluffs. I don't know. So it's like, is Law and Sword anymore? Maybe. I'm still, like, that's still, I still love that theory. But I think for the story and everything, like, the other two are just more fun to me. Yeah. Fair I, enough. I think the law, the law theory, I think is one of the first theories that I saw where, you know, I, I think I caught up to Wano, and then I went back and read so many, or watched so many theories videos, and that was the, one of my favorite ones at that time. So... You know, shout out to you for that one. But but yeah, I see what you're saying though, like with the progression of the story what we have right now, I, I could see how it could change over time. Um, where it's like now you have, and, and you know, like you've been doing YouTube for a while now. So it's like, I, th I think a lot of people, like they make a new theory. It's like you kind of just grow um, more of a love towards a different one. Like one of my more recent ones, I think is my favorite. So I see what you're saying though. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, Excuse me. There's there's sometimes when like you're coming up with a theory and you're just like, oh, oh man, you know, and it's like when I was when I was reading chapter nine fifty six, and this was before I was, you know, uh, doing YouTube, um, like I immediately ran to Reddit because I wanted to be the first person to say this, because yeah. I was just like when we saw Kobe, and because I was always suspicious of law but I couldn't pinpoint like exact, or I didn't have a word for what it could be. And when I saw Kobe and Drake talking to each other, like I instantly put it together. Like, wait, these two people are connected to law. Cause I've always been trying to figure out what the Rocky port incident was. So it's always the Kobe thing for me where I'm just like, wait, hold up. There's yeah. something fishy going on here. Like this man is an op. I think law for sure. I still believe it. I think one thing that I think was confusing for me was Garb because I agree with your theory that Garb was connected to Sword. But I feel like, because he's so, I think Garb is the example of freedom in the Marines. And that's really what Sword is and what Kuzan explains it to be. But then it's like, at the same time, they don't, the Sword members don't treat Garb as if he's part of their crew. Um, I mean, they took all of his orders and he pulled up with all of them and was only working with sword members. Yeah, so that's, that's the way true. that I see it now is like, I, I was saying that Garp was the, the leader of it. Yes, and I, I think that too. he still is to a degree, but it's not a title. I think that he inspired it and that it only came about from his actions. So yeah. the way that he was searching for freedom in the Marines and not taking promotions and all this stuff and showing that you could do things from within and stay outside, then other people were like, I want to be like Garp. And then they just started calling it S.W.O.R.D. Yeah, I guess to be fair, too, is like Garp is also retired. So it's like he could he could have been the leader of S.W.O.R.D. at some point And then, you know, now he's not. And that might be why there's not like this direct title of sword with him right now um yeah, that makes sense i mean it's also uh, it definitely stemmed from his inaction right during marineford like not being able to to stop the death of ace right i mean that's the, that's what i'm that's what i believe why he started sword why he would start sword if yeah, anything yeah. so yeah i mean it's, it's like bro yeah because garb perfectly fits with that entire model of doing what you want um and I, and I do think he's similar to Luffy in the sense that he's going to do what he wants. He might do it his own way. He might truly believe in justice, but he's still at the end of the day. He's not going to let somebody tell him what he wants to do if he really is. is If he really wants to, like, he's he's going to do it. So, I mean, we even saw him right before how you said, you know, he, he let Luffy hit him. And I, I think it's it, it was really tough, bro. It's like he didn't want to capture Ace, but... You know, Ace and Luffy, they, they knew what they were getting into when they became pirates. So, you know, he tried to prevent it in the beginning. Yeah. It, it's, I, I just want, like, I was trying to find in that theory was a angle to kind of understand Garp's actions in that moment. Like, yeah. how could he do this? How could he do that? And the only thing I could come up with is that everything is bigger than what was happening there. So it's like I can't save Ace because I'm trying to I'm trying to topple this entire system. You know? So it's like 
And then you go to the moment where it's like Sengoku like throws Garp's head into the ground. And then it's almost like, was he trying to say like, hey, don't mess this up for us. Like, was he in on it? Like, is he trying to also dismantle everything from within? So mm. it, it, it just, there's so many issues on this higher level, you know, which starts getting into, you know, conversations about, you know, what is Dragon really about? What is he really doing? Um, what is, how does Shanks move in this world? You know, why do all of these dads in One Piece like abandon their kids? And it's like everybody, if they're all trying to stop the oppression in this world, then suddenly you have a desire and a want and something you're fighting for that just like in real life with wars and all that kind of stuff, it becomes bigger than your own family. So it's like you just kind of have to understand that. And if that's what Oda's trying to speak on, then that's what I was trying to say in that theory. Mm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fire theory, man. Like, like I said, um, one of the first theories I watched before I started getting, I think I, I don't even know if I, I might have not even had a thousand subs at that time, but it was, you know, it was early on for me and really inspiring, you know, like, because I think that was one of your first videos that popped off, right? Or maybe your first video. It was the first one that popped off for sure. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't even, I, I didn't even have a thousand subs when I put that out. Like I was doing YouTube for Dang, that's crazy, yeah. Uh for probably like almost a year at that point. And then I was like, all right, let me let me take this theory that I had put on um uh, I, I wanna... and then put it and then put it out. Brandy, yeah. uh I do wanna ask one uh question and it, it is a bit off the sidetrack because we're now talking about YouTube, but what is the like as as a YouTuber, I'm sure that like you have not not struggles but you would like try to figure out how to stay as consistent as possible because youtube is a very like imminent platform that you need to be consistent on so how do you stay consistent or try to like create as much content as you can on youtube uh i mean it's tough man you know because it's like i've got um i've got work i got a family you know and all that and it's like this is it's something that I dedicate time to because it's fun and I love the community that I've built, but I, you know, there's parts of it that I, you know, it's like, I wish I could just make the video and, and turn on the stream and not think about like all of the like algorithm stuff or how this thumbnail is going to react. Like I, I, that, Yo, that was, I, I, I hate that stuff. Like I just want to create content, talk with people and, and all of that. And, and it's, you know, it's like now I'm starting to look at my channel and be like, OK, like some of this older stuff from like four plus years ago or whatever. Do I remove it from the channel and archive it because it's ending up in people's algorithms and it's stopping people from seeing some of the other videos that I'm I'm getting into? And, you know, it's like these are the stupid discussions that like I don't even want to think about, you know, and it's that's that's the tough part about doing YouTube and I wish I could just <laughs> be like teching or whatever, where it's like, I don't even have to think about this. I'm just putting everything out. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, you know, it, it's, I mean, I feel like you guys would maybe know more than I do, even though I, I, I think I've been doing it a little bit longer, but I mean, you guys have more subs than I do. So <laughs> my advice isn't, isn't really going to be that, <laughs> that great i think i i mean you know the other thing too is is like i'm official now so um that's that's another thing that my channel has to you know take into consideration and um i you know i lost a lot of growth potential by you know moving from the the scans to the um to the official like wow. i went through i went from like i don't know 15,000 subs to 30,000 subs in a year and then in the past, you know, 30 something thousand subs. And then in the year that I've been official, I've only gained like maybe three to 5,000 subs. Mm. Yo, so it's crazy. like, I, I never that, looked that's back. YouTube. I've never looked back this far at your channel. And like, I see these like old, from like 14 years ago, I see these old videos. <laughs> yeah, it's I like, just, I just took my old YouTube video, uh, my old YouTube channel and then just kind of repurposed it so yeah there's gonna be old videos on there too yeah, it's gonna be like a, 
Oh, I want to. I want to ask you. Um, I always wanted to ask you this. If you can go into it, you know, I mean, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but I want to say you've talked a little bit about. I seen on Twitter. Um, I think you've talked about it on your channel too. Um, the experience with the live action, right? Yeah, I mean, it, I can't really. Um... Is there anything you can say? Or not? Like, if if not, it's cool. It's cool. I, you know, I'm just saying, like. If there's anything you can say about like your experience with it, but if not, then we could just move on. I think this is a lip seal type moment, Priest. Okay, yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like there's like like NDAs waiting to be broken on this one. Like this is nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, I just <laughs> this I, is I, some... I had to ask, bro. But you know, if if not, it's fine. You know, I understand. Hey. No, yeah, I, I would, I would, I cool. would love to talk about it with people, but at the same time, it's like I would rather everybody just see it. No, um, yeah, yeah, you know, so, it's I not... love the live action. <laughs> it's not um it's not for me to to spoil everything because you know it's like yeah i could sit here and i could tell you things that we're doing and and all that and i like that's not fun that's oh, not fun just just yeah. just you know just watch it wait and see it's sit back great. and relax and enjoy yeah if I, I feel that i will say and ask though how is the experience of, of just the whole like like situation going on with opl like how do you really feel about it like just in general like your overall thoughts on it. Not not going into specifics about like content and stuff, but just overall how you feel about it. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, I love yeah. being able to um, give back to something that has meant so much to me for, you know, uh, I mean, more than half of my life, <laughs> you know, 20 okay. something years. So. Um, that's it's... dope, bro. That's like dream come true type shit. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, because when I found out you were <laughs> like you were involved, right? It's like to me, that's bro. That's such a cool thing because you're you're also part of the community. How you say you still make videos, you're still tapped in, and you know I, I've seen you know when I've seen your your channel and stuff, it's like I really feel that you you've been passionate for a while. You always talk about you always bring up you know times when you were reading back in Skypea or I think even Alabaster, right? You said so. No, 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 I, I got, I got current in Skype. Oh, Skype. Okay, Skype. Yeah. So, so it's like, that's bro, crazy. like that's to me, it's like, yeah, like that's that's such a cool thing that somebody in the community is, you know, contributing or even just involved in a in a certain way. And not just that, but the fact that we know that Oda is extremely selective with the entire, like, whole idea of the live action because it's supposed to bring a huge amount of an like external audience to one piece which it did successfully so and the fact that like uh people from the community like yourself and they're able to just join that experience and like add on to it like so much to the point where it becomes a literal global phenomenon like not only are like we proud of you that you're representing the community but like it just must be such an amazing experience so shout out to you randy man it, it must be dope even you know before i was a part of the project I, I i spoke on this and i said that this is you know we love this story but it's it's not it's not ours it's everybody's and there's a there's a barrier for entry for a lot of people there's a lot of people in the world that will not read manga they'll pick up the book and they'll be like uh, i got to read backwards no nah, i'm not doing that or they'll you know they'll turn on the thing and be like i gotta read subtitles no nah, i'm not doing that oh it's a cartoon no nah, yep. i'm not doing that that's a big one <laughs> um, that's a big one oh this Very... looks weird no nah, i'm not doing it but they'll turn on netflix and they will watch the show and it's like and the thing is is that what's on that page and what's on that screen for the you know the anime and the manga uh that those stories are for everybody so it's like the we're, it, it's about breaking that barrier because everybody will watch Netflix. So but, now okay. these stories get to get to be told and they get to be absorbed by everybody in the world. And that's what is that that's what it's always about. I want to gateway is a, drug. Is a master it's story. A gateway drug. That's an interesting point. Yeah. <laughs> so so how, how many people that that watched um the live action, how many of those people do you think are brand new viewers? Because in my mind, I think that it's majority One Piece fans already. But like, if the goal is to be a gateway into the entire franchise, like how, like, or maybe not a percentage, but like, what chunk of those people do you think are actually brand new people coming in? I mean, a lot. I I, I heard so many people that mm -hmm. got their 
you know, their, their mom to watch it, their dad to well, watch I it, was, their brother, I their sister, their, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, you know, their, their friend, you know, all, anybody just be like, you know, it, that's true. Yeah, most people bro. that, that are one piece fans, you know, they've got people in their life that know that they like this thing and they're like, Oh, it's a thousand. It will now 1100 episodes. Like, nah, I'm not doing that. But, but eight episodes, I can't. Yep, facts. Yeah, oh, like, uh, it, it was, yeah. Uh, they'll turn it on. They'll be like, "All right, let's see what this is," and then they'll they'll walk away and they'll be like, "Okay, that was cool." Yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. As soon as they hear that, they're ready to binge. Like, uh, it, it was yeah. surprising, but like seeing watch. people post on Instagram, you know, I'm watching One Piece, people that I never even would expect. So I, I think you're right with that. It's just, I, I like for me, it, it's. I've never even met people that that like One Piece just in my personal life, so it's kind of shocking oh. to me. Like, I, I see a few people they might post it, but for the most part, everyone that I've that I've known that likes One Piece has been online. I I've known I've known a few people that were not into One Piece. They tried the anime. They ain't like the early animation. They ain't, they thought it was too goofy, whatever. Um, and or some people that didn't like reading subtitles, you know. But uh. The live action came out. It's on Netflix, bro. Everyone like 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 Randy, like you were saying, everyone got Netflix and it's right on the front page and they're like, Ooh, I know Mr. G likes this. So let me go you know, let me check it out. Next thing you know, they finish the eight episodes, they hit me up or hit up whoever, they're like, I need more. Next thing you know, they go to the fucking <laughs> anime and or, or start reading the manga. Like I I know like at least five different people that didn't that were not into One Piece until the live action came out. And started getting into it. Like, I have a boy that just hit me up. And he's like, yo, I'm on fucking Saboti, bro. This shit is crazy. Uh, that, like, that's funny, though, because, like, bro, it, it's true because you, you don't... I don't think people realize when you're so deep in the community, you forget that there's people that don't even know how to even access yes. manga, bro. It's like, people always hitting me up, like, bro, where do I even read the, the chapter early? Or where do I even read um, digitally, even in general? Like, they don't even know about Viz or any of this stuff, so... They, like a lot of people they just like it's just the anime and then they don't even know where to go from there yeah, yeah. i mean I, I created a channel to be able to talk with people about this in the first place because i didn't have it in real life so it's it, that's i think that that's why a lot of people do it yeah it's honestly well, kind of like the foundation of how the community got formed you know it's like a kind of an outreach of like yo like this hobby is something that i really really enjoy <laughs> but I don't know if others kind of like it as much as I do. So there's people who make content for it, and then somehow the content just kind of weave together. And now there's multiple creators, not even just One Piece, but just anime in general, that like are able to just mass produce or just like make so much like good content or just content in general and like really kind of make a name for the like entire industry in a way. But yeah. yeah. It, it, it and now really I like good. I go to malls and stuff and I see like walls of one piece merchandise like yeah. that never that was never a thing no like never. megan the stallion mentioning one piece in a song never would have expected in my life <laughs> but here we are she's so bad so, when did she oh mention one piece she did uh, like she said something about luffy um she, she said like made time, a right? claim about, about uh, her uh blank you can fill in the blank with whatever your uh, imagination comes to uh, saying that it's like the one piece luffy f f traveling all over the world oh trying to God, get it bro. i bet you yeah. she ain't lying neither i bet you she ain't lying. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey 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 she just got she just got two times finer <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, right. shout out exactly. to Roger's base for uh joining the stream man for sure, Boys, just big it. roger Whoa. Yeah, I'm He's gonna pull Mega T in real quick for uh, for his for his call in. Yes. Let's wrap it up after this. I think uh, I know Carl was talking about, but I don't know if he can make it. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No two. If they can make it quick, like bro, we could do both. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, let's do it. All right, Mega T, you're on. My call God. Call. What's good, Mega bro? Mega T. What's good, man? What's good? Let me uh, you down a little real quick. I miss oh. those chats, man. Yeah, what you got for us? What you got for us? To be honest, I was just trying to chat because it looked like the chat was scared to call in. I said, where everybody at? <laughs> 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 I was just trying to break the ice for real. Oh, we, had, we had a decent amount of people trying to come through. We had uh, uh, we had three for sure. 
And we have to pause for a minute to get more into some stuff with Randy, but I, I know you got something, you, you know. So. Oh, yeah. No, there's definitely a hot take behind here somewhere. <laughs> we'll see it. So. I ain't got no hot takes, but, man, join the Discord, y'all. JJ trips sometimes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, you heard it. You heard it. Jordan every day, good. every day, JJ comes in there with with some bad take. Bad <laughs> <episode. laughs> Join the Discord is pinned to the chat. Shout out to Mega T, one of the legends in the Discord, Mister Fact of the Day. Um, bro, legends in the OP, OP community in general, bro. Oh, for sure, bro. Yeah. You know, bro. that's what he jumped in the stream for just to slander me. Like <laughs> that's better than any hot take you could have. Listen, had. listen, listen. Today, today I hop in the Discord and JJ said Zoro was the leader of the Straw Hats and not Luffy. I just, I said, I said there's no shot. That nasty agenda for a bro, I man. never take that serious. Oh, gotta argue I gotta, I gotta put back every time. JJ, uh, JJ I, in there spitting. You gotta, you gotta argue with Oda, man. Don't, don't, don't look at me. Just, oh, the story. I've never just seen like it before, when uh, Zane says a kind who's top one, I just don't. It's just foolishness, bro. Yeah. Sakazuki. Sakazuki, top five, bro. What are you talking about? Top Y'all are tripping, bro. <laughs> but Mr. T, bro, I, I gotta say, bro, you've been a supporter for for years. It feels like I think since the beginning, bro. So oh. you know, I, I want to yeah, say thank yeah. you, bro. I've been I've been set for a while. I was I was there for a lot of legendary stuff, you know what I'm saying? Back with Sabo. No. Back oh, with yes, Sabo. Yes, yes. Yeah, with Sabo. Bro, that's, Yo, that's the that's early days. Shout, shout out to was, Sabo, I was, man. I was, I, was in the, I was the only one on Crow's side when he was arguing Snake Man versus yeah. Gear 5 speed. Yes, no, sir. sir. <laughs> Dude, don't hey. bring that up. That's crazy. Absolutely on. not. We have absolutely. Like Randy not. Troy I, I and love. Roger's base, accredited people. A credit people that's with the one piece. That, 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 that is I mean, We can't have bro, those such facts. facts. This we is crazy. We just it back into the one piece community. <laughs> bro, so, so he he, he goes by for his life, man. Bro, <laughs> one three, one three, four, ten toes yeah, down. I, I, I was, I was in the chat. So make it mine. I was, I was. He's right, y'all. He's right. So you, <laughs> so you agree with him on that? But what about when it comes to his green bull love? Oh, oh, no. Bro, we gotta do it like that. It's not nah. love. Oh, love. Cr- Carl's tripping that's with it. that. Or do you think that, that, that Jacob is green? <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that no. green beard stuff. That, no. that's kind of trash. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. That, that's that's we really yeah, have to yeah. ask you about his garling obsession, bro. Garling uh, obsession is crazy, yeah. bro. <laughs> that's nuts. That's nuts. I'm not gonna lie. All this green wow. beard, all this garling <laughs> stuff. That's crazy to me. Yo, I, see, I, I, say, say, it, bro. I love how, bro. Crow made a public announcement. To disavow green or to disavow garling, he still gets that label. What is that? That's crazy, right? That's, that's crazy. Bro, yeah, that's crazy. crazy. Bro, oh, You're still talking about slave now, running stuff. I was like, it's done. <laughs> Everybody's still throwing some love, celestial <laughs> dragons. Uh, that's nuts to me. <laughs> bro, you made one mistake, then you made the same mistake again, but just 10 times worse. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I, had, I had to rock with Green Bull, but I wasn't going to do it with. Um... Bro, especially now in the, during a Kuma flashback, bro. Come on, oh, was, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, was oh. you would have been the antagonist, oh. bro. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a hot take, but but Garling is the biggest fraud in One Piece history, y'all. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. They call, they call him the champion and stuff, man. He was out there killing slaves. He wasn't doing nothing. Yes, that's, sir. That's Wait, he's champion, you know. Wait, he's champion you... of running down little kids with that, a sword. That, that's what he was. That doing. man did not touch Whitebeard, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> he did not he touch Whitebeard. The scar. Oh man. He did not touch white people. Oh, they literally painted targets on the children's back to help Garling oh aim, bro. Like, that... <laughs> fraud. <laughs> okay. That's the Pat Bev of One Piece right oh, there. He's, oh, he's, he's running around tricking y'all for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We got to do this, bro. We got one more call with Carly with Carl, by the way. I'm going to pull him in. What's up, JJ? What you saying? While you, while you pulling in, Carl, I would love for you to, you know, give your thoughts about you know why you specifically say Garling was the one that scarred Whitebeard, and I would love to hear Troy's response. I would, you know, just taking advantage of all the guests, you know. Um, because Garling, I mean, when Shanks meets Whitebeard, he says, "Every time I see your face, it reminds me of the scar that that man gave me." Now I don't know if y'all have seen Roger and Shanks side by side, but them boys look nothing alike. But I tell the same you. Haircut? They got the same aura, though. They got the same aura. Aura, aura for real. Divine they got the same aura. That's aura, bro. 
Garland it doesn't matter. He can't. He can't, he can't not look at Shanks and not think of Roger though. Yeah, but Literally. Yeah, nah, versus Garland, bro. It doesn't Just matter. Me. It, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he might not even know that Garling is related to Shanks. He might not. Bro, know Gar- he is one hundred percent. When I, I bought these stocks and I'm but going down with them, okay? If Whitebeard did see Garland, though, I feel like you got, like, bro, you can recognize it because they look very similar. Yeah, they, if he fought Garland at like God Valley and, like, was left with he a still don't there. even know yet if, if Garling has red hair. I, mean, I would true. assume it does. Like, we no, gotta wait I, for the yeah. anime for that. Like, like imagine he that ass has blue sure. hair out of nowhere. Exactly. Like, sure. we, don't, we don't know. Bro, he's got the freshest cut. I think that, that Chase having all red right. hair is the reason why Garland Sorry. let him go. But that's you know that's another conversation. We got another our last caller, Big Colleen Yo in the chat. Let's hear another it. family, big family another member. Big what family up, family. What's going on? Shout out Carl. You know, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we yeah. got you. We got you. Yes, sir. What's going on? What's going on with y'all? What's going on, man? I had to hop into the chat. I got Crow. My DMs begging me to come on the show. Oh my god! All right. Let's wrap it up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I only I know high takes. Just came to kind of ch- fucking chill with y'all, but um, I kind of want to extend that Zoro and Sanji to be we having in Discord, but it might oh, be a little too late to get to get nasty. It might, might be a little too late to get that nasty. You know, this is dirty. Uh, this is it, dirty. Look what you did, JJ. This is segue you. for me though, because I wanted to ask Randy. Randy, who do you prefer, Zoro or Sanji? Sanji. Sanji. Yes, sir. Okay, wrong choice. Dark side. Randy, Randy like the heat on feet. That's Mr. what he Prince. likes. Exactly. <laughs> oh <laughs> my. You like fast feet. That's crazy. <laughs> y'all, gonna see, y'all gonna see, man. Y'all gonna see. Big Sanji Congress hockey on the way. We'll see. Um Elbaf. Could did we just did we just get the news oh, man, that like heavy. the next volume is going to be heavy on like Zoro versus Sanji in regard to um yeah in June it's dropping it's you, not going to be verses but just information about the two I think I might going to be a volume I might be on Sanji's side here but I saw on Twitter they said could Sanji be Luchi yes yes yeah I'd say yes I think so too yeah. Yeah, never talk about you go pass out now, bro. He's getting my because of we, we preach the heat on feet on my channel. I got the <laughs> apron and everything. Like that's heat on feet. Oh and, shit, that's a good one. I love and that. And we got the and you know I'm waiting for the you know the Blackbeard matchups because I need that heat on Le feet. Yes, sir. Ooh, okay. With the, with the Where do y'all think he's at? No Le idea, bro. You could literally be an idiot. If you can sneak bro. into Marijua, there's no telling what bro, the man can. Hidden, Hidden Island uh, might be right. Like he might be the biggest plotter on the crew. If if when knowing Blackbeard yeah. has the as the crew that that's always plotting, I mean, it might come down to Lafitte. Honestly, not just that, but I feel like if everyone is plotting on Blackbeard's chemistry, oh, sorry, their uh crew, their crew chemistry is just gonna fall apart once plotting starts to like actually happen. And like they try to get in the way of each other and stuff like that, so. Yeah. And that would be the downfall. Right, exactly. Like that would well, be the, a, the exact opposite of those straw hats. Yeah. Exactly. I'm a perf- I'm gonna throw this out there. Let y'all know what Carl was talking about. Then we can go ahead and get out of here. Um, earlier in this morning in the chat, JJ was talking that nonsense, saying that Zora is the real captain of the crew. <laughs> but that's not what made me upset because I'm used to hearing that foolishness. What he did goes on to say. That the only two that really assume leadership roles are Nami and, and Zoro. And I was like, all right, bro, I know what you're doing. You all, you're a Sanji denier. I'm tired of it. Um, so I said a fact, which is that Sanji has stepped up and led the crew in more instances in this story than Zoro has. If you don't believe me, you can go and reread One Piece from start. This is an undeniable fact. JJ didn't have no response. So he stopped responding. That's all that. <laughs> also, one can argue that Luffy leads all the time, Damn. and that he just uses actions and not words. See, mm. that's why. That's why I I would love, and I I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but I would love a moment or or a place in the story where Zoro does take over because either Luffy is away, he's captured, something like I we saw in the pre time skip. Two years of real time where it was just Luffy in the story. Amazon Lily impel down Marine Ford. Now, I'm not saying we need all of that, but it would be fun. Oda will never do it, 
but it would be fun <laughs> if Luffy was just somewhere else and we were following the crew without Luffy for an extended period of time. And yeah, Zoro cool. had to had to step up. Like that would be cool to me. Yeah, I'd like I agree. that. Yeah, I agree. Because if you think of Ben Beckman, right, like he's the vice captain, so he has that level of respect from the entire crew. Or if he makes the call, then like they're gonna follow him no matter what. Even if Shanks not there, like Ben Beckman's in charge. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, yeah, you, Sanji you, 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 already you, led the crew. He already did. Plenty times. Plenty times. Oh, well, <laughs> plenty yeah, that, time. that is true. That is true. We did see Zoro though when when Luke, uh, especially an Egghead recently, when Luffy, Chopper, and Jinbei were off the ship. Who was the one that was protecting the ship? Was Zoro? Like he stepped up. You know what I mean? Taking a nap. I took a nap earlier today. No, I didn't before. Before when 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 Vega Pond. That's the same thing he did at Drum. That is nothing different. They just didn't want him to get lost. That's all that was. That's all it was. I mean, like when 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 Vega Pond first showed up, when Lilith first showed up, you know. But yeah. Am I hearing you say they didn't want him to be a liability? Is that what you're saying? I just don't get lost. Like you know. We got, pre- you know, we in America, we got presidents, we got vice president. You know, if something happened to the president, then the vice president in charge. If something happened to the vice president, then, you know, there's a whole little trickle effect. That's basically when, like, basically when the secretary goes or like one yeah. of these, uh, it's a whole lot of people, things got to change before Sanji's in charge. You know, we go to Zoe <laughs> and, you know, the main characters aren't around, Sanji's in charge. But when all the straw hats is on the crew, is on the boat, and Zoro says, "This is how we moving." Then that's how when we move. When did that happen? When that happen? End of the discussion. When does that happen? Like, what are we talking about? That man be sleep somewhere in the corner while all the important discussions <laughs> happening for real. For real. <laughs> we being honest. Then when we land on the island. The first thing you do is run off and get lost. <laughs> what, what happens here later? Yeah, but no, Luffy was I, about I, a third. Man gave no, no, Zoro has advice. Luffy was about connected to him because that man was... gave Luffy advice two times <laughs> in eleven hundred chapters. And this three makes time sense. Back cold cap. Nah, three it, time. It was. Nah. It was. That arguably, third time was stupid. It was, no, 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 no. no. That, yes. that, bro, that's that's arguably the most important times. Luffy is about to charge into Marijua. Like, bro, if, if that they're not they're well, not hey, ready for that. Shit, bro. You got I, I think, oh, I'm right now. Can I can I say a little thing about about this? I I think when when it comes to Zoro and Sanji, right? I think Zoro just makes sure that Luffy's accountable for his actions. Like he's not gonna go out there and be like, "Yo, Nami, you did this." You said you did this. I think Zoe is more focused. His his way of showing leadership is to make sure Luffy be, is a is a good captain. If that makes sense. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. there's, there's there's more instances of Sanji like you know supporting Usopp and all those you know everyone is strong um, strong hats, but Zoe is focusing on his goal of course of being the strongest. But he's also making sure that he's in the he's in the crew where the captain Luffy is able to strong. you know accomplish that goal. That, that's yeah. strong, strong exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's Zoe's like no, he's not going to go up there and, and like you know lead the crew per se, but he's going to obviously lead by example, which is. Which we all agree that that's the way Zoro is our leader. I agree you with you. That's, 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 that's facts. Because, bro, Zoro was not... He, he's probably not a great leader, if we're being honest. Like, he never wanted to be in a crew. He never wanted to... He never even had a crew, right? So, he's you know, always he been alone. Yeah. And, yeah. But he is... His role is to always keep Luffy in check. So, if he has to, he will. But he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be a leader. <laughs> yeah, well, I, think, I, think, I think they, they both they both they both serve their purposes, and yeah, I mean, they're, yeah. they're, 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 they're wings, little wings, little wings of Luffy, so it's kind of, it's kind of hard to. Just, yeah, I, mean, I, I, just was, I won't more, deny more, this. I, I personally like Zoro more because, I, yeah, I personally like Zoro more because I just feel like Sanji's fucking gag about women and shit. It's over, it's I'm over. We're talking yeah. about gags, bro. We talking about leadership. <laughs> no, but I know, but I'm saying, but no, 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 no. Okay, what if he was a girl, right? And Sanji has to has to fucking has to, you know. It's over. It's over. If I'm gonna be a devil's advocate, if you want to be a leader, you have to be a guide and someone you can uh, be like an emotional stand-in for all people, guide. not just men. So leaders are those who can guide both men, women, non-binary. Oh. Does not matter. He so lost to the Yeti Cool Brothers. If, if Sanji can't handle one part of an entire <laughs> spectrum, then I don't know if Sanji can. This man don't even him. be around half the time. He lost. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna say, he, he bro, get Zoro... to see Garp at first, bro, because he got lost. Bro. Come on, bro. I feel. I think Zoro, without <laughs> Zoro's character even existing in One Piece, I feel like him just existing makes Luffy so much better because you have yeah, like, got, Luffy got still Yeah, and you have a character who's like a. He could be the main character in my opinion. He could be the main character of a shonen series but then you have a guy who's somehow even crazier and 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 not even like luffy's without zoro he like he 
Zoro is who he is, and then Luffy's just somehow so much higher. And to me, that's that really elevates Luffy a lot more. For sure. I mean, definitely, they're both Zoro and Sanji are, in my opinion, the two different sides of Luffy's dream. I've said this oh, before. I this point, about yeah. it. One of Zoro is the power that's required to be the king of the pirates. Sanji's dream is more so the sense of adventure and not knowing if something really exists, but going after it, which is the all blue. So those two together, you put it together, it's the king of the pirate dream to me. Same with, I think they're also like his ace and Sabo, just as a dope. I mean, like, you know, that actually survived. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up because we got to oh, get out of here. Yeah, I gotta head can, out I, can I ask you guys one one more question before we go? We just can hit on with our, we can hit with our outros. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, so this is actually my boy, Wyhus, part of the Straw Sit Down. He got too, uh, too nervous to get on because Randy's here. He's a big fan, Randy. So I just wanted to let you know. Uh, so the question, the question is, uh, he's in chat too right now too. So the question is, uh, he wanted to ask is, has your opinions changed on the final villain now that Blackbeard has the world as his goal? Uh, and, and who asked this question? Uh, one of my crewmates, uh, why has on the show? I has it down. Okay. Um, what's up? What's up? Um, Final villain. I mean, it's it's tough when you kind of break everything down because it's like there's so many different scenarios. Like, me personally, I would prefer that the final villain is Blackbeard. But, you know, the story is kind of implying that it, you know, will or should be emu at this stage of the game but i'm always more of a fan of the character that you fight at the end should be someone that was told to us somewhere relatively in the beginning and then you know in that situation then you know one a person the i i hate the idea of like shanks being a villain or anything like that but that would be like the that would be the true full circle thing but that's not what i want for the story i would rather um, you know, maybe Emu, Emu is taken out by Blackbeard, and then it's like when we take out Blackbeard, we're spiritually taking out Emu. But then you get into larger conversations of like what's more important, becoming Pirate King or freeing the world. And it's mm-hmm. like the opposition to freeing the world now is actually both <laughs> because <laughs> Blackbeard now wants the world and technically also <laughs> wants to be Pirate King. So, I mean, it's... technically speaking, uh, the most vulnerable time, like a person or a like regime has, is right when it's about to be overthrown. So technically, like it's really possible that Blackbeard can be a final villain just by taking over that mantle from Emu. So I can see it. It it, it is possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think I think Blackbeard narratively is the you know, the best case, because you still have all the ties to Ace and everything with their, um, everything what he stands for. Uh, he is the perfect, like, it. it's a, it's a situation where Blackbeard and Emu are both kind of the same. They're both doing the same thing for Luffy. They're both the yang to his yin. Mm-hmm. He's this, you know, figure of light, and they are both figures of darkness. So Oda's got to figure out which one he's actually trying to portray as the you know top dog here yeah yeah all right cool. i think one last question we gotta ask randy randy do you watch yeah. basketball oh goodness <laughs> you're trying to ask oh, me my team to no, Kobe, oh my god bro. well okay okay well we'll ask this first uh, if you watch basketball uh who would you rather take kobe or lebron kobe Let's go. Let's go. Easy days. That's it was like uh, that, that's not even that bro, like that I'm not I'm first of all, I'm not from the LeBron era in the first place. So I'm always yeah. gonna, like I'm, I've, noticed, I'm the, I've noticed a trend here. Everybody that picks Kobe doesn't really watch the basketball anymore. But that's no, fair. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, listen, I mean, the I, dude's I not think in I the league. Basketball until, yeah, I I think, yeah, I think Kobe was injured for like when I first started getting into basketball. Sounds like you're making a bad choice, then, brother. 
Nah, Look, it's 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 fine. Like LeBron is a he he's a great player and all of that. But the thing is, is like LeBron. Uh, you know what I love about, you know, I mean, like obviously you have to put MJ in the conversation. But I mean, like if we're just if we're just talking about Kobe and and LeBron, like yes, Kobe. Kobe Kobe had way more aura than LeBron has in his pinky. Oh, oh my goodness! Like, uh, like, right. like right. if you if you go right. back, right. And, and you, one one nah, one nah, basketball. Nah, nah, go, back, go, back, go back and go back and even watch those right. Kobe system I'm commercials from Nike, bro. Like the way this man looked at everybody, it was just like, "You're welcome." Like I think about that daily. I think about that daily. That is true. He's the one man to bewilder Kanye West. Like I am genuinely confused. <laughs> like, are, 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 you, are you a, are you a, are you a different animal West and the West. same beast? <laughs> what does that even yo, mean? Yo, 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 croak, croak, croak. I just want, yo, I just want to say, I just want to say, he hasn't said one thing about basketball, by the way. That's crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now it's a fair opinion, bro. I respect it. It's just it's always we ask every guest we have that question and you know it's been a lot of bad answers like that one but it's all uh, good you know it's, 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 cool. Cool. Yeah. it's cool LeBron, right lebron's the right answer it's cool for sure answer well. Well, real one real that real. definitely makes a lot of sense so well, all right we're gonna do some <laughs> outros and get out of here real quick um <laughs> randy <laughs> troy you can go uh, oh it's, it's, just, it's just funny bro <laughs> yeah they wild in the chat bro my sunshine LeBron. <laughs> All right, you, ready, Troy? Just let them know what you got planned coming up for your chat, <clears throat> for your channel. I'm sorry, um, and anything you just want to let them know. Go ahead and do a quick outro, and you know, do your thing. What's up? What's up, everybody? Thanks for uh, for joining in. Shout out to the seventy, you know, four seventy five people that are in here right now. Uh, I am Randy Troy. You can find me at youtubecom slash Randy Troy. Uh, we got theories. Yep, like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. We got the um, uh, the we do the chapter streams every Sunday when the viz drops. We got the analysis videos. We got the theories. Check out the uh, cross skill DV back video. Love that. We got more theories coming out soon. I got a big one on Luffy's lineage that's going to be Ooh. dropping. Um, you know, sometime in the next two weeks, I imagine, and. Um, yeah, look out for uh, One Piece season two. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm dude. I'm so excited, bro. I'm so okay, excited. Sir. My girl watched it with me. She's ready for it too. Um, <clears throat> all right, Mr. G, you want to say anything about Stride and Sit Down? Uh, yes. Uh, we also do our chapter reviews on Sunday. Uh, we we changed our time to two thirty, uh, p.m. EST. Um, we'll see you guys there. We we are doing. I'm not sure what we're doing this week for the break week, but we're getting ready. For Otis comeback next week, uh, John Sherrod, I, dude, I am so humbly like appreciative of you for inviting me today, and uh, for all, always you guys, OPU Crow, Preach, uh, you guys always, you know, hit, talk, hitting us up and and helping us out too when it when it comes to kind of creation and you know joining the One Piece YouTube creation space, and uh, I, I appreciate you guys. So definitely be on the lookout for us. Uh, we definitely on the come up. He said he loved Kobe because they see it on his roof. Wow. And it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Stry has sit down for sure, man. Shout out. Come make sure you subscribe. I'll just drop the link. Out. Randy True as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to drop Randy too. Yeah, we don't. We got, if you really got to go, we ain't got to worry about our outro. Carl, right. just say what's up or say bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just want to say, I just want to say, I appreciate everybody coming on. And, uh, you know, Randy, I, I, know, I, know, you were, I know you're a busy guy. But you still made it, so you know we're happy to have you, man. And if you ever need anything from me, you know, you know, I got you. And uh, hopefully, we'll we'll be able to do it again on your channel or you know on our channel again sometime. But but yeah, man, I appreciate your time and appreciate you coming on. Um, everybody who came in, in the in the calls, you know, uh, uh, Mr. G came through, and it was a last minute thing he came through, so we appreciate that too, man. Oh, uh, thank you, bro. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate you having me. Uh, sorry, I couldn't get here sooner. It's a fun it's a great time, conversation. Bro. It was fun. Yes. Of course. <laughs> yeah. we, we always gotta have fun over here, man. That's what it's about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm a. Uh...